Hey how you doing? Hope you all are doing great. As you seen in the thumbnail, in this video, we are gonna see, what if Naruto trained by Batman for Chunin exam. This is part 1, and before getting into video. I request you to check the author of this fanfic, and show some love and support. Name of the story is. Kai Wielding Ninja by Gegeta408, do check it out. All details in description. And if you want next part of this series. Please leave a like share, and consider subscribe. Let's get into the video. It was late night in Konoha. Most shinobi were searching to find the person who stole the forbidden scroll. Naruto Uzumaki was now with Iruka Yamino. The two had just finished fighting Mizuki who originally told Naruto to steal the forbidden scroll as another way to graduate. Mizuki also told Naruto that he contained the Kayubi and that he was a demon. Naruto was now reflecting on his life and realized a few things. After all the harsh glares the ignoring from others and having little to no friends. He was done with this. Done with the way they treated him. He decided then and there he was not going to be a shinobi anymore. He quit trying to be a shinobi. He also quit his dream of being Hokage. Naruto. I have something to give you. Hiruka stated to the blonde who proved he could be a shinobi. If it's a high eight, Then I do not want it. Naruto replied with calmness in his voice. Hiruka was shocked that Naruto would not want to be a ninja. This high eight is the first step to becoming a ninja. If you don't want it now. Then you can wait until the next semester. That way you can hone in your new skills. Hiruka explained seeing as Naruto learning the Kage Bushin could take some time to master. I do not want to become a ninja at all. Not for Konoha. Not for any village. Naruto answered as he heard another person coming into the clearing. It was Hiruzen Siratobi. He was the current Hokage. An old man at that. Hello Naruto. I'm glad to see that you were able to catch the traitor. You do know that catching a traitor means that you can become a ninja right? Hiruzen stated to the blonde haired boy. Yeah I know that, but I do not want to become a shinobi. Naruto replied. Why not Naruto? You're close to earning the village's respect. Hiruzen stated as he saw Naruto hold out two scrolls. One with a spiral symbol another with three curved lines in a circle. Hizuren was shocked that he had those two scrolls in his hand. That's not what my parents wanted. I was supposed to be seen as a hero. Not as an outcast. Naruto stated to the two shinobi. You're planning on becoming a nukenin Naruto? Hiruka questioned his former student. I already told you. I am not becoming a shinobi no matter who you get to try to convince me. Naruto explained to the two. Come on Naruto. This is a nice joke, but it needs to end soon before some thinks you're serious. I mean the team assignments are not for two weeks. You can still be on a team. Hiruzen stated to Naruto. I'm not laughing. Naruto replied as his voice was serious. Let's go back to the Hokage Tower. We can discuss more about what caused your thoughts to change. Hiruzen said as the trio made their way back to the Hokage's tower. Hokage Tower. The Hokage Tower was packed tonight. Simply because the council was waiting to be informed on who took the village's forbidden scroll. Naruto Aruka and Hiruzen walked into the room. The people in the room were silent when the three came in. They were able to get a seat before Hiruzen addressed the council. Greetings council. I was able to find out who took the forbidden scroll. It was Mizuki. Thanks to the aid of Naruto Uzumaki and Aruka Yamino. The two were able to stop Mizuki and retrieve the scroll Hiruzen stated to the members in the room. I believe it was Naruto who stole the scroll in the first place. Danzu stated as he glared at Naruto who said nothing. Leave the boy alone. He has done nothing to harm any of you he Ashi said to his fellow council member. Except contain the fox who killed our loved ones. A shinobi exclaimed before being dragged away by Anbu. Hiruzen's law was still in effect after all. Well you don't have to worry about me no more because I quit trying to be a shinobi. Naruto proclaimed as the council was in a stance still. So you're just going to quit because of a few civilians Tsu masked as Naruto turned his attention to her. A few civilians. Are you kidding me Tsu? You try being the boy with no friends. You try being the person who has to try to gain people's approval. You try going through life being glared at by people you don't even know. Besides being a person without a keki genkai or skill is hard. Naruto stated to the council. What does having a keki genkai have to do with your current situation Shikaku asked. Simple. Kanoha has a lot of clans with them, and they seem to be popular with the civilians. It's hard being an orphan in a shinobi village, seeing as orphans don't have a lot to begin with and have to build themselves up in the public's eye. Naruto stated to the current Nara clan head. I understand. Orphans do have to prove to the public they can be trusted and with you and your certain situation. You weren't able to prove yourself. Inoichi said getting his point. Glad you see things my way. Anyway I have to go so I may see you guys again eventually. Naruto stated to the council. You're not going anywhere Naruto. Danzu yelled. He wasn't about to let the Jinchuriki walk away just like that. Really now? Then let me tell you something. 
I quit being a shinobi for one, thus meaning I don't have to follow what the Hokage or any other ninja tells me. Two I prepared for this day for the longest. You can say I think two steps ahead. Naruto replied as he pulled out another scroll which had a red leaf symbol on it. What is that boy? Hamura asked the Jinchuriki. In the scroll it's a letter from the Fire Daimyu stating that I can leave Konoha without going through the council. Therefore I can leave Naruto stated as the council was in an uproar. We can't have you leave Naruto. What about your friends? Chaoza asked seeing as Naruto was friends with a few people his age. I don't have that many, but I will leave them a letter. Naruto replied to the Akamichi dot. Are you sure there is nothing we can do to make sure you stay in Konoha? Hiruzen asked the blonde. Not really. I will find my purpose eventually old man. Naruto answered. Then go Naruto Namikaze. You are excused Hiruzen said in a defeated voice as Naruto left the tower with a grin on his face. As the council was shocked yet again at his full name. Nice job. A voice in his head commented. Thanks Kayubi. Anyway I'm glad I was able to prepare for this scenario. It was only a matter of time. Naruto thought. I didn't think you would quit being a shinobi though. I thought we were just going to leave Konoha. Kayubi asked the blonde. Reading my parents' letter really sent me over the edge. It made me realize that ninjas have no honor among themselves. Naruto thought while remembering his mother's letter. Are you going to your parents' house? Kayubi asked. I plan on sleeping there tonight. Naruto thought. He made his way to his parents' house which was in the clan district of Konoha. He was able to find his parents' house. It was pretty big to say the least. It was about two stories overall. He walked past the gate and walked on the stone path towards the front door. He noticed that the door was locked. He remembered his parents say something about a blood seal. He pricked his finger and wiped the blood on the doorknob. The door opened and Naruto walked in. The inside of the house looked great. The walls had a nice blue and white color pattern. He walked around the house just to explore it for about 30 minutes. He went to his parents' room which was upstairs. He noticed that their bedroom was painted a nice shade of green. He also noticed the crib in the room. It made him happy to know that his parents were ready for him. He walked to the closet in there and noticed that there was cloths in them. He tried a few on and learned they fit on him. He picked some of the cloths in the ceiling scroll. Hey he might not be a shinobi, but there were a few skills that he could use. He then worked on the letters to his closest friends. It took him most of the night, but he finished them. All of the letters were sealed and addressed to the people he cared for. He finally went to sleep. Hoping that tomorrow would be a better day. Next day. It was morning in Konoha. Naruto was ready to deal with what the village had in store for him. He got up and took a shower. After his shower he got dressed. He was now wearing a pair of black pants a white muscle shirt a black vest and a pair of black boots. After he got dressed he went to his parents scroll vault. He took what was in there and sealed them in one huge scroll. What's in the huge scroll? Kayubi questioned the blonde. Ten scrolls. One was ninjutsu scroll a jinjutsu scroll, two tojutsu scrolls one kinjutsu scroll a few ninjutsu scroll and four scrolls with money. Naruto thought. Are you going to destroy this place? Kayubi asked her container. What? No. I am going to reactivate the security seals thought. I don't want anyone stepping on my property. Naruto thought as he went into the living room. His father said that the security seal switch was behind a picture of a spiral. He found it and channeled chakra into it. The seal glowed red which meant it was reactivated and that if you were not Naruto. You were in deep trouble. Wouldn't the explosive seals harm you when you walk out? Kayubi asked not wanting their container to get hurt. Seeing as my chakra reactivated them they will not harm me. If I had to bring a guest I would channel my chakra into where the seals are outside to deactivate them. Naruto thought while making sure he had everything before going to the door. Well let's go. Kayubi said as Naruto walked out the house. He had a feeling that he would come back to it one day. He was now walking down the street. He was going to the Chirakus for breakfast like he usually do. He noticed people were giving him looks. Some were happy that he was leaving. Some civilians as well as ninjas were angry due to the fact that he was the son of Minato Namikas and he was leaving the village. He was now at Ichirakus. The smell of their raiment would have to be one of the things he missed the most. He walked into Ichirakus and sat on his usual stool. Good morning Naruto. A.M. greeted as she came from the kitchen. Hey sis. I guess you heard that I found out who my parents were huh? Naruto said as she nodded. Don't think I'm going to treat you any different Naruto Uzumaki. Another person stated as they came into view. It was Tuchi Ichiraku. Glad to hear it old man. Now give me one of everything. I might as well enjoy it. Naruto replied while Tuchi went and started to make the order while A.M. stayed up front to talk to Naruto. So what are you going to do seeing as you're leaving the village A.M. asked. I'll find something to do. Trust me. Naruto replied. It better be legal because if not then you're going to get it. A.M. threatened the person she saw as a little brother. 
Don't worry sis. I plan on doing something very productive once I find it. Naruto stated as Tucci came out with his food. Naruto ate the food slow. Actually savoring the flavors. Naruto was finished eating 30 minutes later. Thank you am old man Tucci. It really means a lot that you care for me. Naruto stated while he handed the two an envelope. What's this Naruto Tucci asked looking at the envelope with a confused look. It's a letter I wrote to each of you. There is a check in there as well. Naruto replied. I really don't want you to leave Naruto. AM said pleading before giving Naruto a hug. I know AM, but it's just the fact that I'm tired of being ignored. Naruto said looking AM in the eye. AM. Let Naruto go. I can tell he will be successful in no matter what he does. Just promise us that you come back to Ichiraku's ramen and eat one day. Tuchi stated to the blonde Namikas. Don't worry old man. I will, believe that. Naruto stated as AM let him go. You better Naruto or else I will come and find you. AM said with determination. I will believe me. Naruto replied while he walked away from AM and Tuchi. It was hard walking away from the people he viewed as his sister and uncle. He decided then and there that he was going visit the Hokage. Hopefully Hiruzen could call the others who have not received their letter and talk to them in the Hokage Tower, rather than in public. Hokage Tower. Naruto showed up at the Hokage Tower. He told the Hokage who he wanted to see and told him to call them there. A few minutes later Naruto's closest friends were in the tower. All six of them. Naruto. What's going on? Tenten asked. Naruto knew Tenten because he shopped at her parents' store. I'm leaving Kanoha. Naruto stated as his friends were shocked. Why would you leave Naruto? I mean sure you failed this year's exams, but you can still become a shinobi next year. Rock Lee said. Rock Lee knew Naruto because he and Naruto used to have class together. I don't want to be a shinobi Lee. I just hate what shinobi call honor. Naruto stated one of his reasons for leaving. I see your point Naruto. Seeing as most shinobi don't have honor. Shikamaru replied as samurais were known for honor, while shinobi tended to play dirty. Just make sure you come back Naruto. I want you to see my newest artwork. Sai stated while Naruto nodded. Sai and Naruto used to be in the same orphanage together. As you can see I just want to find a new purpose in life. Away from this village so that I can find myself. Naruto said to his friends. It's cool Naruto. Just stay safe. Kiba said while Akamaru leaped onto Naruto's head and licked his face a little before stopping. I will Kiba. Naruto replied. Well if you're leaving then here. Choji said giving Naruto a bag of chips. Shikamaru and the Hokage were shocked. And Akamichi giving away food meant that they really trust them. Thanks for the food Choji. Here guys I each wrote you a letter and left you guys something in there as well. I will try to stay in touch with you guys. Naruto stated handing them their letters. He still had a few left. Dear old timer. This is for a few of your Anbu ninjas who had my back since I could remember. Naruto said giving Hiruzen a few letters. Hiruzen noticed that they were addressed to their code names. You do know that dog retired right? Hiruzen asked as Naruto nodded. I know that. Have both dog and boo read it. It's two letter in one envelope. Naruto explained. Anyway, Naruto. I hope you have a safe trip and become successful in whatever you do. Hiruzen stated as Akamaru jumped off Naruto's head and went back onto Kiba's head. Don't worry guys old man. I will. Naruto said before leaving the tower and walked towards the village gate. He showed the guards the letter and was able to leave with no problem. A week later. Naruto arrived in Wave Country. He was able to get a boat ride so that he could go into the town. He noticed that there was a bridge being built and wanted to meet who was building such a huge bridge. He asked a person named Kaji who was taking him across the ocean. He said it was Tazuna. A person with a dream to make the wave free from their tyrant known as Gato. They made it to the shore where Naruto gave Kaji some money and thanked him for the trip. Kaji was happy that he was able to get paid and left. Naruto was walking around the entire town and noticed how sad the people were and wanted to change that. He wanted to see them happy again and see this town prosper once more. He continued walking until he ran into an old man. He looked at his clothing and took a guess that this was Tazuna. Are you Tazuna the bridge builder? Naruto asked the person. And what if I am? The person replied with a question of his own. I just wanted to talk to you. You look like him from what Kaji said. Naruto replied to the man. Well I am. Are you trying to work for me boy? Tazuna asked the young man. I could use the experience. When do you think I can start? Naruto asked the bridge builder. Any day you can make it. We stopped for the day. Tazuna answered. Can you give me about a month before I start? Naruto asked the old man. Of course you can. Just knowing that you want to help me means a lot. I suggest you find a place to sleep. It's late. Tazuna replied as he looked at his watch. I will see you in a month then and thanks for the advice Naruto said leaving the bridge builder. He was walking in a forest area in which he noticed a house. 
It looked more like a manor if anything else. He started his walk up the path. He noticed that there was a sign with letters WM on it. The sign looked like it belonged on a gate. He finally made it to the double doors. He opened them and noticed how huge the house was. This place was big on the inside and outside. Naruto. Kayubi said getting Naruto's attention. Yeah Kayubi. Naruto thought while continuing his walk around this manor. He noticed that there was nothing wrong with the place besides the vines and flowers that seemed to be growing, but he could fix that problem. As a matter of fact he could have this place up and running if you gave him a month or so. I believe we should explore this place more. I have a feeling that there is more to this place than it leads on. Kayubi stated. Couldn't agree more Kayubi. Naruto thought continuing his walk around. He was now staring at a working grandfather clock. He noticed that the time was wrong and went to go fix it. It was 10.47 Naughty set the time he heard the sound of gears moving. The grandfather clock moved to the side as if it was a door. I take it this was what you were talking about huh? Naruto thought while looking down at the darkness. Even I do not know what is down there. I suggest you proceed with caution Kayubi advised. I will. Naruto thought looking at the darkness. He noticed that there were stairs and decided to walk down them. Not knowing what was down there. Multiple steps later he heard a noise. He was ready for whatever it was. As it turned out they were bats. They seemed to live down here due to the fact that it was nice and dark. Naruto noticed that he finally made it to the final step. Once there the cave lit itself up. Naruto noticed that there was a huge US penny, as well as a giant joker card. I take it this person had too much money. Kayubi commented. The two had an agreement in which Naruto allowed Kayubi to see hear taste and smell what he experienced. This place looks like a museum if anything else. Naruto thought while looking around and noticing the multiple suits gadgets which were in their own display case. He decided to take a seat in front of a huge screen. Once he sat down the screen came to life. Naruto was interested with what was in front of him. That was until a person appeared on the screen. This person had spiky black hair and wore a pair of black pants and a black jacket. He wore a blue shirt under the jacket. My name is Bruce Wayne. I was the owner of Wayne Industries. I was also the Batman. Now if you may not know who the Batman was then let me inform you. The Batman was a symbol. He was a person who would protect the innocent and bring those to justice. That was me. A person who put on this uniform and fraught crime. Now I may not know who you are, but I do trust that you must have some luck finding the Batcav. I want to train you into becoming the next Batman because no matter where you are. The world will always need a Batman. I have uploaded multiple files on my Bat computer. There are multiple videos that show my fighting style, as well as how to repair mechanical items, as well as how to make a bat suit. I have also uploaded my greatest enemies as well as my allies. Hopefully I have given you some hope as well as a brighter future. Bruce Wayne explained as the video stopped playing. Wow. Seems you hit the jackpot with this one Kayubi commented. The next Batman. How hard can it be? Naruto thought to himself not knowing how much hard work he was about to put in. I say we should look at some more of these files he uploaded on this bat computer. Kayubi suggested. It never hurt to read. I want to learn more about the stuff he used during his time and then move on to the training part. Naruto thought as it took him a few times until he learned how to use the computer. I mean the hospitals have computers, but none like this. He stayed up that night learning how to use the bat computer to its fullest advantage. He didn't go to sleep until he had an understanding of how to use this computer. Next day. It was around 10 o'clock in the morning. Naruto took out a bag of chips Choji gave him and ate them. He decided that today was the day that he was going to work himself until he dropped. He clicked on a file labeled beginner's training. The video started by showing Bruce wearing a black guy. He was standing straight up. Naruto did the exact same thing. I hope you are ready for your month of training. Do not worry by the time we are done you will have mastered the entire beginner's training, as well as some of the intermediate moves, depending on whose training you want. Bruce stated to Naruto. Naruto. I want to advise you that you still have those tojutsu and kenjutsu scrolls your parents gave you. Kayubi said to Naruto who nodded. I'll practice those also seeing as Bruce's training might take a while to master. Naruto thought while he started copying Bruce's movements. One month later. Naruto can proudly say that he felt stronger faster and even more smarter. In this past month he learned a lot from Bruce and parents. He knew that this was just the tip of the iceberg when it came to training, but this was just fantastic. He also took the time out to read multiple books on modern technology from when Bruce was alive. He also went to visit Tazuna and his family during this month before he started working at the bridge. Naruto. It has been a month right? Kayubi asked. Yeah. I believe Tazuna said something about hiring ninjas from Konoha or something like that. Naruto thought while looking over a few of Batman's greatest villains. Most of them were impressive. Well how about you show those ninjas just who's boss? 
Kayubi stated to Naruto. I would love to show those shinobi, but I can't suit up in the bat suit for another three months. I simply don't have enough gadgets yet as well as armor plating. The Batmobile itself looks like it will take me another year or so to build seeing as I don't have the metal needed. Naruto answered. How about you become someone else for the time being? Kayubi suggested. I could do that, but who? Naruto thought looking at a file that he never seen before. He double clicked on it and it opened. It showed the person's bio as well as their picture. This person would do. Naruto thought with a grin. Indeed. It looks like he didn't use a lot of technology enhanced tools. We can use chakra to power his suit. Kayubi said to the blonde who nodded in agreement. Yeah way less technology as well as metal than Batman's suit. His suit looks like it was made for speed. I thought I could use chakra for Batman's suit, but he has too many things that need electricity. This suit seems like it needs a power source for the blast attacks. Naruto thought as he clicked on a video that showed this person in action. Let's go for it. Kayubi stated while Naruto paused the video and got up from the chair. He went to where the suits were and started his search. Let's see. If I'm right the suit should be right here. Besides the Nightwing suit. Naruto thought as he looked at the suit. The suit itself was mostly black. The only armor on the suit was on the forearms knees shins as well as the mask. Naruto read that the previous power source was dangerous. The thing that stood out about the suit was the red X on the chest. Naruto guessed that's how he got his name. He put the suit on and learned that it fit. Now he needed to see if Chakra could power the suit. He started channeling Chakra into the suit. At first nothing happened but a few seconds later the suit came to life. He noticed that the HUT was blue. He also noticed that X on his palm were glowing red. How's the suit? Kayubi asked while Naruto was shooting out a few chakra beams from his palm. It's great. I'm glad I brought my own shurikens as well as smoke bombs I was even able to find one of Robin's bow staffs laying around that was able to work. Naruto thought as he picked up the staff. Well Naruto it's time to leave. Kayubi said while Naruto went towards a previous back of exit. This exit now lead up to a waterfall. With the way the exit was he had to guess it was for the Batmobile or the Batboat. He made it up to the door which opened when he walked through and closed after he left. He first took a deep breath and was happy to be outside. Fresh air. Feels great. Seems the fog is rolling in Kayubi said to Naruto who was looking a. Time to kill a pig Naruto stated. It was time to start the age of the bat to being. Brad X was now making his way to the town. He noticed that Azuna was with a few ninjas. To be more precise a few Kanoha ninjas at that. Red X decided to follow the group from a distance. He was able to hide a majority of his chakra, seeing as the suit had to compress his chakra in order to power the suit. Red X was able to see who was guarding Tazuna, thanks to the digital binoculars that Robin built into the Red X suit, he just had to channel chakra into the suit's eyes and there we go. The binoculars were activated. He noticed that it was three of his former academy schoolmates. Saz Kei and Sakura Haruno. The fourth person was the dog Anbu, who was assigned to guard him when he was little. Do Jutsu to Jutsu Kinjutsu Jinjutsu and some Ninjutsu. You only really need to Jutsu and Kinjutsu to survive, but the others are good. You don't really need flashing Ninjutsu to win. Red X thought to himself when he saw Sai throw a kunai at a bush in which startled the group. Sai walked over to the bush and pulled out a white bunny. Sakura yelled at Sai saying that he was stupid to try to kill a poor bunny. Clearly the bunny was used for a Kawarimi. Now it's time for me to find out who used it. Red X thought to himself. He heard a sound that caught his attention. He saw a huge Zanbutu that went sailing to the group of Kanoha ninjas who ducked just in time. The Zanbutu hit a tree a few feet in front of them. He heard Zabuza talk to the group about why he was here before he went through a few hand signs. He noticed that a mist was forming and that his binoculars were blocked. Luckily Robin and the other owner of the suit upgraded this suit multiple times before they both passed. He wished this suit had that detective mode that Batman suit had, but Robin gave this suit's multiple eye upgrades. I doubt it was Abusa who switched with the bunny. Now let's use the infrared to find this person. Naruto thought as he brought his right hand to the corner of his right eye. He pressed the button there as the HUD vision changed from the binoculars vision to infrared. He noticed that he was able to see heat signatures with this feature. Reading and seeing are two different things huh? Kayubi commented while seeing infrared for the first time. You bet it is. I wonder why we don't have this technology. Naruto thought as he continued looking at the group of ninjas. Well when you have keki genkais. This type of stuff becomes outdated. Kayubi said. Ninjas. Naruto thought continuing his search. He started to look into the forest across from where he was. He noticed that there was a person there watching the fight. Another person. Kayubi said seeing the person. Well let's go see what they're all about. Naruto thought to himself as he stood up. Didn't Robin put a teleporter on this suit? 
I know it only works short distances, but since you're using chakra to power the suit then maybe you can make it longer. Kayubi suggested. Time to find out. Naruto thought to himself channeling more chakra into the suit. His HUD came back up as he noticed the words teleporter activated. I guess you're in control of the teleporter. Kayubi said while Naruto then disappeared in a blur, and then he appeared a few feet behind this new person. I need to work on this when I get back home. Naruto thought as he too far from the person. Are you going to kill them? Kayubi questioned the blonde. You know I don't kill unless I have to. Naruto thought while approaching the person. The person turned around and noticed that a masked person was right behind them. Who are you? The person questioned. He noticed that they were wearing a hunter's mask and dressed as a hunter ninja for the mist. Name's Red X. How about you? Red X asked trying to continue this conversation. I am a hunter trying to capture my target. The person replied in a calm voice. Why are you a ninja? Red X asked again. Because it's something I want to do. The person answered. What do you think about the wave situation? Red X asked. I feel as thought this could be a great country if Gato wasn't ruling it. What makes you ask that the hunter said not knowing where this conversation was going? Well I was just wanted you opinion. Red X replied as the two noticed that Zabuza was now slammed into a tree. There is my target. Now if you don't mind I have to leave. The hunter stated as they left Red X. Red X watched the scene as the hunter took Zabuza's body and left the leaf ninjas and Tazuna. Someone lied. Naruto thought to himself. The whole hunter ninja act was fake, but their answer was truthful. Kayubi replied as the fox used Naruto's ears to listen to her answers. Kayubi was focused on the hunter ninja's heartbeat when they were answering the questions. I bet they were working for Gato. Zabuza did say he was working for someone and who else but Gato. Seeing as his whole operation would fail if Tazuna finished the bridge. Naruto thought as he noticed the mist was leaving the area. Let's go get some information. You should go to a bar or restaurant. They have a lot of people there you can question. Kayubi suggested. I'll go to the bar. Red X thought while he started walking towards the only bar and grill in Wave. The Low Tide Bar and Grill. Low Tide B.A.R. and Grill. The bar and grill was the only thing that brought in money in the Wave Village. Seeing as the owner made a deal with Gato from what Tazuna told him. He wasn't sure what exactly Gato told the owner, but it must have been something good seeing as the bar and grill building was one of the better and well-kept buildings. The building itself had two floors. The main floor in which the bar and grill was in and the first floor where the owner kept most of their money in a safe. From what Tazuna said the owner built a room so that they could live at the bar and grill. Let's see. I could use the back door, but then I have to deal with the cook seeing me. No way I'm going through the front door. I would use that tree climbing technique, but if there are shinobi in there and they sense me using chakra, I don't want to draw attention to myself. Naruto thought to himself while he was hiding behind the bar and grill as he noticed that there was a few windows on the first floor, as well as a few branches that went towards the windows. I found a way in. I am so happy Red X was a thief. Naruto thought to himself. He started to use the tree climbing technique to climb the tree and then went towards the branch which went to the window. He realized that there was yard gap between the branch and the window. I say jump it and balance yourself on the window ledge. Sure it's a shot but it's worth it. Kayubi stated. I don't have a choice. Naruto thought running back into the tree so he could build up some speed. He ran towards the end of the branch at a fast pace. He jumped and was able to land on the window ledge. Made it. Now let's see if I channel my chakra into my right palm a few options should come up. Naruto thought while channeling chakra into his right palm as multiple options came up on the HUD screen. So many options. X-shaped blades X-shaped explosives X-shaped constricting restraints. I think you want the X-shaped glass cutter Kayubi said. The X-beam is a default attack let's see if I remember Grayson's video then I would have to tap my palm multiple times until my HUD highlights the thing I want to use. Naruto thought while he used his thumb to press his palm six times. Inside the HUD the glass cutter was selected and right hand screen select went away. Let's see if this works. Naruto thought as he pressed his palm on the window and channeled chakra into the red X on his palm. The X glowed crimson as he noticed that there was a crimson X on the window. Turn the X Kayubi said. Naruto turned the X and saw the glass was being cut until he completed a half circle. After that he pulled his hand in which caused the cut glass to go with it. Naruto noticed that the glass he not only cut was in a circle, but also he hand could fit and open the window. He opened the window and let himself in. Good you're in. Now put the cut glass back into the window. I know they would be on to something if we didn't. Kayubi stated while Naruto put the small circle back into the hole in the window, thus making it look like nothing Naruto pressed both his palms a few times until the words X blades appeared on the HUD. And never be too careful. Naruto thought to himself. While he started walking around the room he was in. 
He was glad that his shoes had some kind of padding, in which made his step silent, no matter what he stepped on. Red X continued walking until he saw the door which lead to the hallway. He decided to go to the door to see how many rooms were up here. He opened the door and walked out. He counted three other doors besides this one. We must have been in the owner's bedroom. Kayubi commented. I guess we should go into the private room. Naruto thought continuing his walk towards the door and heard a few people talking about Gato and how they planned on getting back at him somehow. Red X decided to make himself known as he walked into the room. He noticed that there were five people in there two females and three males. Who are you? A male with spiky brown hair and brown eyes said. They were wearing a pair of blue shorts a blue vest a white shirt and blue sandals. This was Caillou. He was Gato's former manager of shipping. Caillou knew where Gato's ships would go and where they stopped. The person who hates Gato Red X stated as the two women told him to sit down in between them. My name is Yumi. A woman with long blue hair said. She had green eyes and wore a pair of black pants a pair of two-inch heels and white blouse. She was Gato's former financial manager. She knew how much money Gato had and where he kept it. My name is Tsuchi. The second male said. Tsuchi had some muscles on him from what Red X saw. He was bald but had on a casa. He had brown eyes and had a beard. He wore a pair of black shorts a white shirt a black vest and black sandals. On his back was a pair of swords. He was Gato's former bodyguard and knew a lot about Gato's associates. My name is Kasai the third male said. He had short red hair which went to his shoulders and a pair of grey eyes. He wore a pair of black pants a blue shirt a pair of black sandals and a blue vest. He was Gato's ex-architect. My name is Raikou. The second woman stated. Raikou had short blonde hair which went to her shoulder and framed her face she had a pair of blue eyes as well. She was wearing a pair of black pants a yellow blouse a black jacket and a pair of black sandals. She was Gato's ex-records keeper. Brad X went on guard as he heard the door open. He turned around and noticed that it was a woman who came in. She had long white hair which went to her mid-back and had green eyes. She was wearing a pair of black pants a white sleeveless shirt and wore a pair of black sandals. She was the owner of this bar and grill, as well as Gato's ex-advisor. Hey Sukai. This guy says he wants to take down Gato. Tsuchi stated to the owner. Really now? Go on and sit between Yumi and Raikou. Sukai said seeing the empty seat between the two. You don't have to tell me twice. Red X replied while walking towards the chair. He noticed that all three women had some nice curves to them to boot. Stay focused Naruto. Kayubi stated to her container. Jealous Kayubi. Naruto thought as he sat down between the two women. Be jealous of them. You're very funny kid, but I know my body is better. Kayubi replied boasting about her figure. I haven't seen you in your human form. Anyway I have to pay attention right now so I'll talk to you later. Naruto thought before focusing on the conversation at hand. So why do you want to take out Gato? Sukai questioned the masked person. Simple. I believe Wave is being held back by him and I want it to change. Red X replied. That is true we never had someone besides Kazai who stood up to Gato. Kayu said pointing out as Kazai died when trying to stand up to Gato. Well I know I can get rid of him. I just need to know where his base is in Wave and I can go from there. Red X stated to the people in the room. I hope you know that bitter X employees do have a lot of information. Yumi replied the masked person who nodded. You all worked for Gato before. Red X asked as they each stated what their job was for Gato before he fired them. I take it you guys were proficient while you worked for him. Red X asked the group. We've worked for him since he started. We were all 18 at the time and decided that the shipping paid good money. We all were able to get jobs that we loved to do. Tsuchi said. Starting the conversation. We were the best people he had. Not to boast or noting, but even some of Gato's associates wanted to hire us because we were that good. Raikou responded. But that was nine years ago. Now look at us. We were discarded by that short pint pig. Kasai said the last part in a snarl. What if you had the opportunity to do what you loved every day? Red X asked the group again. I would be very happy. Sukai said as she liked what she was doing before Gato fired us. Well I do know a friend of mine who is trying to open his own business. He says that he wants to start the main company in Wave and have multiple branch companies across the entire elemental nations. Now the head of this whole operation is 13 years old, but he knows his stuff when it comes to doing business. Red X explained while he looked at everyone taking in this information. You did say if being a ninja didn't work out, you would have been one fine businessman. Kayubi commented. I thank AM and Tucci for that one. They even said they were going to let me run the shop with them if I were to become a civilian. I would just go on the supply runs. Naruto thought remembering his time with A.M. and Tucci. I want to meet this kid in person and test his knowledge by giving him a written test to see if he really knows his stuff. Caillou stated to Red X. I take it this test will be hard. 
Red X asked. Of course it will be. Us six will each have written a section of the test, and if this guy aces the test, then we will give this company a shot. Yumi explained. Just as long as he does not do anything illegal like sell drugs or keep slaves. Suchi said as he hated when Gato did that. My friend hates me who rape women as well as keep them as slaves. He believes that women should be treated equal no matter what. Red X replied as he was speaking from the heart. Sounds great. Now what is your name seeing as you know ours mask san? Raikou asked. You can call me Red X, I just want you to know that there will be more masked people like me working with you guys in order to make it better tomorrow. Red X stated to the adults who nodded. Will you hire more civilians as well? Cass I asked. Of course. This will be a business for civilians. Red X answered. What about Shinobi? Both Tsuchi and Sukai asked in unison as Red X glared at the two. I take it you two were ex-ninjas. Red X asked as the two nodded in agreement. We both worked for the Mist Village before the Keki Genkai massacre. I hope that us being ex shinobi doesn't change anything. Sukai replied. It won't. My friend only hates the shinobi lifestyle, seeing as there is no honor among them. He doesn't hate those who are shinobi. I do warn you he does dislike a few people in Kanoha. From what he told me is that he was treated by being ignored by the majority of the village. Red X explained. So when can we meet your employer? Caillou asked. He should be here tomorrow afternoon after Gato is handed over to the village by yours truly. Red X proclaimed to the other six nodded. So how do you plan on getting into Gato's hideout? Sukai asked. I planned on asking you guys to assist me into getting into Gato's hideout. Seeing as Kasai built it himself. Red X replied. I do have the plans for it. Kasai stated as he pulled out a scroll labeled Gato's hideout and handed it to Red X. This is all I need. Red X replied while looking over it before rolling it back up. Please bring Gato down. Yumi pleaded to Red X who nodded. Don't worry I will Red X replied with determination in his voice. Red X then pressed the X on his belt and vanished. I believe the kid will get the job done. Did you hear that determination in his voice? Tsuchi stated to his friends who nodded in agreement. Glad you sent him up Sukai. Raikou said to her friend who now had a look of confusion on her face. I didn't see him come in. I thought he came in with you guys. Sukai replied back. Red X is a powerful person Caillou said as the group of six went back to talking about what life would be like without Gato. With Red X. After he teleported out of the room. He ended up on the roof of the bar and grill. He now was going to back of entrance he remade. He walked towards the waterfall and walked through it. Under a rock there was a keypad. He entered the code and the wall opened. He walked into the back of and went towards the big computer in which he took off his mask. Glad gathering information was a success. Kayubi said to Naruto. It was but I still need to get used to using more of the gadgets on the suit. The teleporter worked, but I overjumped what I was aiming for. I bet on one of these videos show how Grayson manipulated his power source. Naruto thought as he started to pull up Red X file on the big computer. He clicked on a file named Xenothium. He started to read the file and noticed that Grayson felt that the Xenothium could be manipulated and can do what the user wanted it to do. The same goes with your chakra. I believe that you only need to practice with the suit until you're comfortable wearing it. Kayubi said to Naruto who nodded. Couldn't agree more Kayubi. Naruto thought while he put the Red X mask back on and started training and using the suit. Naruto decided that he will infiltrate Gato's base at midnight, which gave him 9 hours to train with the suit, as well as upload Kasai's blueprints onto his suit. It was now approaching 8 o'clock, and Naruto decided to go visit Tazuna in his Red X suit. Are you sure you want to visit Tazuna in this attire? Kayubi asked as he did have Konoha Shinobi over. Yeah. Besides I have a good backstory so I'm covered. Naruto thought while walking out of the cave. He was now out of the cave and now made his way towards Tazuna's house. Tazuna's house. Red X arrived at Tazuna's house. He smelled that Tsunami had just finished cooking dinner. He knocked on the door and waited for someone to open the door. Tazuna came to the door and opened it. Red X walked in as he ducked two kunais that came towards him. He felt two people try to come at him from each side. Red X countered by using his X blades and had them aimed at both their necks. The two genin were shocked at the blades that Red X had on his gloves. Is this how you welcome everyone? Red X asked joking with the group. Who are you? Tazuna asked the masked man. Hoping it wasn't one of Gato's hired hands to take him out. I work for Naruto Uzumaki. Red X said introducing himself to the group who was shocked at that fact he worked for Naruto. Why would you work for Naruto? Naruto quite being a ninja. Sakura asked the masked person. I know he quite being a ninja, and I don't blame him for that. As for why I work for him is because of the fact that we had similar goals. Red X stated to the group. And what might that be? Kakashi asked as he was sitting at the table with his crutches propped on the table. We want to free the wave village. 
Red X answered the masked ninja. Hey what is your name? I need you to pass a message on to Naruto. Tazuna asked. If it's about him working at the bridge he said he'll come tomorrow afternoon. Red X replied. That's good to know then. Tazuna said as he was glad to have another worker start tomorrow. Why would a loser like Naruto work on a bridge? I mean from what I hear is that he is the son of the Yandame. So why would a person from a clan full of ninjas work as though he is a civilian? Sasuke said dissing Naruto. Unlike you Naruto knows what it means to work at something until it's perfected unlike someone's clan. Red X said making fun of the Ichiha Sharingan. And who do you think you are? Sasuke asked as he felt the two red blades on his neck start to press on his skin. The person with your life in his hand seeing as you and your friend in the black has their necks on my blades. Red X replied to the Ichiha. No need for unnecessary violence now. Kakashi stated trying to calm down the situation. Would you like something to eat? Tsunami asked Red X who nodded. Sure but I need to take it back to my place. Not that I don't like you Tazuna or Inari. It's just that I don't have time to sit and eat. Red X said giving his reason for not sticking around. How do you know their names? Sai asked the masked person who still had his blade to his neck. Naruto told me about them. How else would I know where they live? Red X answered while he recalled his X blades as Tsunami gave him a bag in which his meal was in. Red X noticed a black rat on the floor and decided that it was time for him to leave. He pressed the X on his utility belt. Well kids I have to go kids. Remember X marks the spot. Red X said using the teleporter to get him out of the house. Red X appeared a few feet near the waterfall, seeing as Tazuna's house was close to his manor. Lost that ink rat Sai made in no time. Time to go eat and get Gato. Naruto thought while he went through the waterfall entrance and sat at the big computer and ate his meal. After he finished he decided to do add a few smoke bombs, as well as flash bombs to his utility belt. He made both the smoke and flash bombs a few days ago. He also grabbed a few of his homemade sleeping bombs just in case things were looking bad. It was now 11.55 and Naruto decided to read over one last part about the suit which he knew would come in handy. I say we use it as a last resort. There's no telling how much power that feature drains. Besides you're already great as stealth no need to become a ghost. Kayubi said after reading the feature. The invisibility feature is amazing, but I want to use my X-beams soon. Naruto thought going over the suit one last time. Well it's time. Kayubi said while the clock in Naruto's HUT read midnight. Naruto went out to the waterfall exit and used the voice commands for his suit to bring up Kasai's blueprints. Naruto started to make his way to the Gato's base. Gato's hideout. The place Washuge. He thought that it wasn't that big, but it was like a jail. The house itself was surrounded by trees in which there were multiple lookout houses that were on top of the trees. He also noticed that there was a huge gate that surrounded the house. He also saw that the house lead to the ocean. He guessed that's where the shipping parts came in. Overall this was going to be fun. Asai's plans were on point. Gato's watchtowers are set up in a pentagon shape with me facing the one that is in the middle. Naruto thought to himself while observing the different towers. Take out the one in the middle and I guess we can work from there. Kayubi suggested. Time to go to work. Naruto thought while he started running up the tree. Naruto stopped running when he was at the ledge of their tree HOUSE to describe Gato's treehouses, they are like the security towers from Batman Arkham Asylum. The only difference is that the treehouses are covered by the leaves. Naruto saw that there were two guards sitting in the treehouse facing the tower. Gato was smart. He built the treehouses and have them covered by the tree's leaves, giving them a natural look. Also the inside of the trees are hollow, so that the guards can climb the built-in ladder inside them. Naruto thought. These guards are stupid. They left their lights on. Kayubi commented seeing the light through Naruto's eyes. Time to take them out. Naruto thought as he climbed the ledge that was in the tree. He still had the art of surprise on his side. He grabbed one of his sleeping pellets and threw it into the room. The two guard felt drowsiness overcome them before falling asleep. Do down. Kayubi said. Naruto grabbed the two bodies and put them a few yards away from the tower. He tied them up just in case they tried to escape. Naruto then went back to the treehouse and was now searching the treehouse for anything useful. He saw a sheet of paper that he knew was going to help him. Guard schedules for the inside of the house. Oh yes this will do. Red X said to himself while he read the schedules. He noticed that they switched post every 30 minutes. He also noticed that the guards had to stand outside two rooms. One was Gato's while the other he guessed must have been Zabuza's room. Must be that hunter and Zabuza's room. Kayubi said. Judging by who is guarding Gato's and Zabuza's room. They must be armed with weaponry. Naruto thought while he continued reading the schedule. Maybe you could have those two join you. Kayubi suggested seeing as having allies was a powerful thing. I'll think about it. Naruto thought while he started planting explosive axe in the tower. The explosives were on a timer. 
Got those set. Time for the next tower. Naruto thought as he repeated his process for the next four tower. He now had all ten guards tied up and gagged in a tree, which was yards away from the explosion that would occur later on. The explosives are set. Good thing this tower is close to Gato's gate. Naruto thought while he jumped from the watchtower to the gate. He landed with no problem. Naruto dropped from the gate and now was in Gato's maze garden. Things can never be easy. If only Kasai's plan included how to navigate through the maze. Naruto thought while he started his walk through the maze until he saw a light that was a few feet away. Guards patrol the maze too. One of them must have a map. Naruto thought as he jumped on top of a maze wall and walked towards the light. He stopped when he saw that it was one of Gato's men with a flashlight. Naruto saw the person walk back the way he came. Naruto crouched and went towards the person. A few seconds later the person was knocked out and laying on the ground. Naruto searched his pockets and found a map of the maze. Seems like Gato has people guarding the maze for some odd reason. From this guy's notes on the map Gato has something coming in this morning. Too bad he won't receive it. Naruto thought while well he used Kasai's notes to find a basement door. He was able to get to it no problem. It turned out the door was unlocked which made it easy for Naruto to go through. Basement. Beto's basement was big. Naruto noticed multiple crates as well as cages inside his basement. He walked to one of the cages and saw that there were people in them. Wake up. Red X stated as he saw a few people stir. Another person working for Gato. A female said with disgust from inside the cage. My name is Red X and there is no way in hell I would work for Gato. I guess you can call me a hero of some sorts. Anyway watch out. Red X explained while using his X blades to cut the locks on the cage doors as they were now opened. Naruto noticed that all of them were females between the ages of 13 and 30. All right now I want you guys to go through this door which will lead you outside. Take this map to get through the garden maze. From there on go through the gate door and after you pass that you should be able to get into the town. Red X explained handing a map to a female who was in their early 30s. Thank you Red X I just don't know what to say. Another female said as she was lost for words. You guys can go and leave Gato to me, Red X said while well, the group of females were now leaving the basement, thus leaving Naruto and a bunch of crates. Let's see what's in the crates. Kayubi suggested while well, Naruto found a crowbar and used it to open the crate. Swords. Red X said as he opened more of the crates as he saw that there was more weapons. I guess Gato was preparing to kill everyone with Wave with this arsenal. Kayubi said guessing what Gato's plan was. The baddie won't get that chance. Naruto thought as he started to make his move upstairs. He was at the door which led to the dining room. He pressed his ear against the door so that he could hear if anyone was coming. He heard no noise so he made his move. He opened and closed the door quick and started to make his way to the stairs. If his guard schedule was right then no one guarded the stairs. He heard a few footsteps and knew that the guards must have switched spots. He knew he had to find a place to hide. He ran up the wall until he was able to hang from the ceiling. Due to his foot hitting a painting the guards ran towards the spot where he once was. The two looked around for a few minutes until they came to the conclusion that no one was there. The guards left to go to their post. Naruto decided to stay on the ceiling and walk towards the stairs. Once there he dropped from the ceiling and started to walk up the stairs. Once he was at the top of the stairs he looked down the halls before he started to walk. Okay Gato's room is located on the western side of this base. Time to hit him hard. Naruto thought as he was now on the west side of the base. Judging by his map Gato's room was at the end of the hall. He saw the two guards and knew he had to take them out. The two guards noticed him and thought he worked with Zabuza. I take it you work for that Zabuza guy right? One guard asked as Naruto could smell the sake coming off of him and his partner. I just might. Why? Red X replied to the two drunks. Because the boss says he is going to kill Zabuza and his masked pal. The second guard stated. Oh really now? Red X said to the guards as he was now interested in the current conversation. Yeah, Gato always kills any ninjas who work for him. The first guard said seeing as Gato did it in order to not pay them. So where is Abusa? Red X asked the two. I think he lives in a tree base or something like that. The second guard replied not really sure where Zabuza was. So what's in the other guarded room? Red X asked seeing as it wasn't Zabuza and his friend. Oh that room. He keeps all of his money in there and has his top guards are posted there the first guard said using air quotes around top guards. I take it these guards are pushovers. Red X asked the two who nodded. Of course they are. They're all muscle and no brains. Now us we always in charge of guarding Gato the second guard stated with some pride. I have to thank you for the information. Red X stated as his hand started to glow red. Nice color. The first guard commented. Go to sleep. Red X said as used the electricity from his hands to stun the two. Time to meet the boss. Naruto thought walking into the room. He saw that there was another door inside the room. 
He guessed it was a closet door, but that was not the point. He saw his target who was now sleeping. Wake up call. Red X stated as he hit Gato in the face. The man was awake due to the amount of pain he felt on his face. What are you doing here? Guards. Gato yelled as he was scared of this masked person. They're on vacation right now, but they'll be glad to hold their calls. Red X replied to the businessman. What do you want from me? If it's money I have a lot behind that door. Gato answered as he pointed to the door. I don't want your money Gato. I want justice for the wave village. Red X stated while Gato started to laughing. Justice. What are you a hero of some sorts? Let's face it you guys are extinct from this world and replaced by Shinobi. Gato responded to the masked man. You can call this a comeback then. Red X replied as he noticed that there was some rope and went to grab it. What are you going to do with that? Gato questioned while he was backed up into a wall. Tying up some loose ends. Red X answered as he tied Gato up. My men are on their way now as we speak. When I backed into the wall I set off an alarm. Gato explained while the door that was inside his room opened. As two huge and muscular men entered the room. They both were wearing black pants, black muscle shirt, black sandals and black gloves. They each had tanned skin, brown eyes and no hair. They were the second and twins. The twins reminded Naruto of Punch and Judy. Joker's hired hand. Oh joy. Red X said with sarcasm dripping from his mouth. Kill him. Gato shouted as he was grabbed by Red X. Don't move or else he dies. Red X threatened as he had one of his X blades at Gato's throat. We're supposed to move. That's what the boss wants us to do. One of the twins known as Kuro said. See if we don't follow what the boss wants then we don't get paid. The second twin known as Aoi said as he started to walk towards Gato. Aoi Kuro. Don't do anything. Just do as he says. Gato replied to the two twins. So are you our boss now Aoi asked the masked person who nodded. Yes I am. Now I want you two to go in the other room and bag the money. After that meet me at the docks. Red X stated as the two stood there as if they didn't hear him. The green paper you two. Gato yelled with frustration as they went to bagging the money. Red X carried Gato towards the docks. Docks. Naruto was able to get to the docks no problem. Gato's guards at first questioned the two, but Naruto was able to make up an excuse to tell them. There was a medium-sized boat at the docks as well. The second and twins were making their way to the docks. Here's all the money boss. Aoi stated as he and his brother were carrying four huge bags each. Load them on the boat for me. Red X replied while the brothers did just that as the boat was now filled. Now you two are going to check out an explosion which should happen in a few seconds. Red X stated as Naruto's explosives were set to go off in 90 seconds. No, they are not. You two work for me again. Now get him. Gato shouted as the two twins were about to attack Naruto. Naruto threw Gato onto the boat. Well he was able to dodge a punch by Aoi just in time. I really don't have time for this, Red X said while his palm set on his explosions. He did a front flip over the two and hit them on their head as a Red X was on the back of their heads. As the timer was on 40 seconds. Time to move before the fireworks go off. Red X thought while he started running from the two twins who were chasing him. He knew if they were to catch him then he would be dead. Time's up Red X stated as the explosions went off as the watchtowers each exploded. Aoi and Kuro's head exploded as well. Naruto felt sick that he had just made his first kill. Which was two people at the same time. You can weep later. Kayubi said as they had something to at the moment. You're right. Wave is about to get their justice. Naruto thought while boarding the boat. He noticed that Gato was trying to escape. Don't do that. Red X stated as Gato stopped moving. What are you going to do to me? Gato asked the masked person. Like I said. Justice. Red X answered as he started the boat and drove the boat towards Tazuna's bridge. Halfway there. Naruto thought while well, they were able to make it to the bridge no problem. He parked the boat under the bridge. Why are we here? Gato whined to the masked person. I can't take your voice anymore. Naruto stated as he hit a pressure point on Gato as it forced him to sleep. Now we wait. Red X said while well, he decided to get some type of sleep himself. Wave Country to Zuna's bridge. It was morning at the Wave Village. The entire Wave population was now on the bridge, including Tazuna his family and the Kanoha ninjas as well. They heard from multiple people that a masked person was able to capture Gato. Red X said he was going to have Gato here. Kasai said as he held Red X to his word. You believed that fool. Sasuke stated to the group. Well Sasuke I keep my word. Red X replied as he teleported on the bridge with Gato wrapped up. The people of Wave cheered as they saw the cause of their pain tied up. The cheering caused Gato to stir from his sleep. What are all you people doing here? Gato asked a group of people. They're here to get their justice for your crimes against Wave. Red X replied. I committed no crimes against this village. I saved them from themselves. 
They wouldn't know what to do with the power to have one of the most powerful shipping industries. They would lose themselves to the money. Gato reasoned with the people in front of him. Many of them looked at him in disgust. Well that happened to you. I believe it won't happen to them. So in other words the people of Wave decides your punishment. Red X explained while the townspeople took Gato's body and went to give him a punishment. Thank you Red X. For everything. Tazuna said to the hero of Wave. No problem at all. Just make sure you do two things. One thank Naruto for having me come out here. Two finish this bridge and give Wave a new start. Red X said while using his teleporter to disappear two miles from the bridge. Waterfall entrance. Naruto was able to make it to the waterfall entrance. He pressed the button and walked into his batcave and went to the bed he had made in there. Get some sleep. You had a long night. Kayubi said while Naruto took off the Red X suit and went to get some rest. Wave Country Noon. Naruto was glad to catch up on some sleep and now was wearing a pair of black pants a blue button shirt a black jacket and a pair of black shoes. This is what Bruce said he used to wear to a meeting. He liked these suits way better than the kimonos he used to wear. Naruto was now in the village and was going to meet Tazuna at the bridge. Tazuna spotted him coming and went to meet him. Naruto my boy. I just want to thank you for everything you've done. Tazuna stated to the blonde who shrugged it off. No problem Tazuna. I try to help when I can. Naruto replied. Red X said he worked for you so I have to thank you. Tazuna said as Kasai approached Naruto. Red X works for you right? Kasai asked the blonde who nodded. I take it you're Kasai. Red X told me about him meeting you guys. Naruto replied. That's good to hear. Kasai said. So I'm supposed to take a test or something? Naruto asked Kasai who shook his head. Not at all. Tsuchi said while well, Hiyumi Sukai Raiku and Kayu approached Naruto. We are ready to work for you. Yumi stated to the blonde. Where were you guys when I needed help on the bridge? Tazuna asked a group of people. They are here now Tazuna and that's what matters. Now Tazuna I know you have a supplier who gives you metal for the bridge. I need to talk to him or her and at least get in contact with them, Naruto stated to the bridge builder. What are you planning on building? Tazuna asked. My own industries. I was thinking spiral industries. Naruto said while he heard someone laugh. Spiral really? Sakura said as he saw Team 7 on the bridge. He noticed that Kakashi was on crutches due to his fight with Zabuza. I thought you went home already. Naruto replied to the ninjas. We have to wait until the bridge is built. Kakashi answered as he was on crutches. In other words. You're waiting until you're healed. Naruto replied as Kakashi nodded. I'll have the person contact you. Tazuna said while the hunter ninja appeared on the bridge. If it isn't Zabuza's partner. Sakura shouted as she pointed to the hunter ninja. It took you that long to figure out I worked with Zabuza. Why are you guys shinobi again the hunter ninja said to the group. You should leave the bridge now before I beat you to the ground. Sasuke threatened the ninja. Sasuke is so cool. Sakura thought to herself as she heard a moan of disgust. When will you get over this phase? Sasuke isn't that great. A voice in Sakura's head said. Shows what you know. Sakura though while going back to daydreaming about her and Sasuke. I hope that someone will get me out of here. Maybe that Red X guy can. Inner Sakura thought. Not with your Jonin sensei hopping on one leg at the moment. The only person who is a threat is the one wearing all black. The hunter ninja said while pointing to Sai. Sakura was shocked that this hunter ninja claimed Sai was a threat when Sasuke was the last to chair. Sakura took it upon herself to explain why the hunter ninja was wrong. Sai only does dumb drawings techniques. While well, Sasuke Chiha knowledge of fire style jutsus are amazing. Sakura said bragging about Sasuke. I hope I am able to transfer team soon. I mean what kind of ninja gives away their teammates techniques. Maybe I should take the Danzo guy up on his offer. Then again I think Danzo may only use me. I hope that I am able to talk to Naruto before we leave. Sai thought to himself hoping to see his friend again. She just gave away some of their techniques. I can't believe she is a Kanoichi both Haku Kakashi and Naruto thought. Anyway I am not here to kill Tazuna. I am here to talk to Naruto. Haku stated. Me? Naruto pointed at himself, while the hunter ninja's eyebrow twitched in annoyance. Yes you. Zabuza Sama wants to talk to you, Haku stated. Why would you want to talk to a guy who quit being a ninja? If anything, you should come to the leaf village. Sakura hollered. Both Haku and Naruto winced at that. Sorry, but I wasn't talking to a one of Kanachi, Haku replied coldly to Sakura. Sakura saw red as her face exploded into embarrassment and anger. She was about to respond when Kakashi, her sensei, cut her off. Please Sakura, do not get into things that don't concern you nor our village, Sakura was stunned that her sensei was backing up the hunter ninja. Alright I'll meet with Zabuza then, Naruto said. I'm getting too distracted here. Well if you would follow me then we can be on our way, Haku turned around so Naruto could follow her. 
I'll meet with everyone later, Naruto said as he followed Haku. Tabuza's hideout. Naruto and Haku talked to one another while they were walking. They both were able to get to know one another better as they continued the walk. Their walk came to an end when they reached a huge tree. We're here, Haku stated as Naruto looked at the tree. So you guys live in a tree, Naruto deadpanned. The life of a missing nin, Haku stated sadly as she pumped chakra into the tree. The tree opened up to reveal some stair. Follow me please Naruto, the two walked up the stairs. They reached the top of the tree where Naruto saw how big the inside was. You guys have four rooms, Naruto commented as he looked at the doors. One for everyone, Naruto turned to meet the sound of the voice and was greeted with the sight of Zabuza and the demon brothers, Gaozu and Maizu. We have to make sure everyone has a space. Even if it's not a lot, Gaozu replied as Naruto remembered the bingo book page about the demon brothers. So how many people live here? Naruto asked the group. Just us four, Maizu replied. I noticed. But why am I here? Naruto asked. Because you agreed you'll meet them. Idiot. There was a rumor going around that someone was able to get into Wayne Manor and fixed it. We wanted to know if it was you, Zabuza crossed his arms over his chest and gave Naruto a big toothy grin. Would it really matter if I lived there? Naruto asked to the ninja. Actually it does. Simply because we would want to work for you, Haku commented. Why would you want to work for me? Naruto asked once more. Due to the fact that Bruce Wayne was able to work with Batman, Gaozu replied. You want to work with Batman? Naruto questioned confused. Of course. Batman was a symbol for hope during times before the Shinobi Wars. I want to bring that hope back to Kiri. That's why I want to talk to you, Zabuza said with a little edge in his voice. What to do in this situation? I mean I do need a team and these guys would be perfect. At the same time I need to know if I can trust them if I reveal my identity. I say let them join. You did say you would think about it. Kikbi answered for him. I guess I can make it so they can access the manor, but not the Batcave. That sounds good, but we need them to suit up. I mean if people see that you work with missing nins. Then business will be bad. Having them suit up would be great. That means I'll have more field operatives and people won't know who they are. Naruto came to a decision right there. He grinned to himself in that thought. Alright I'll have you guys work for me. I was the one to access Wayne Manor. I have jobs for you, but I need to know what you guys are great at, Naruto said in a cool tone of voice. Well I'm good with Kenjutsu and interrogation. Haku has a Heimton Keki Genkai, but is also good at hunting, stealth, and weaponry. Gaozu has an affinity for fire. And Maizu seems to be great in taking orders and seeing that they are done, Zabuza replied with a faraway look. Trying to see if he missed anything. Haku what is your gender? The cloths you wearing hide your figure. Naruto asked. I am a female Naruto. I meant to tell you earlier when we were talking, Haku replied. That's good. Now please, go to Wayne Manor in about an hour, and I'll have Red X meet you there. He will show you your jobs, Naruto replied as he left Zabuza's hideout. We're doing good so far. If Naruto was able to access the Batcave like the rumors state. We may be able to get suits like the Batman, Zabuza stated with a grin. What kind of suits boss? Gaozu asked. Well Batman had a lot of villains he captured. They say he was able to recreate their costumes and preserve them. If that's true then we may be able to vanish from this world, Zabuza replied to Gaozu. So these suits will be our alter identities then? Maizu asked as he catched on what Zabuza was saying. Zabuza nodded. We'll be different people altogether wearing those costumes, Zabuza replied. We might even get out of the bingo book if we were to vanish altogether, Maizu stated as the group was thinking about how good it would be for them to live a life without being hunted. Bat Cave. Naruto was back at the Bat Cave. At the moment he was going over files on the Bat computer. He was wondering who was going to be who. He had a few files pulled up on the computer that he was choosing from. We're going to have to have them come to the bat cave they have to step into that body structure machine so that the bat computer can measure their body's dimension so that the suits can fit them properly. That true. Naruto thought as he was looking at the files on Huntress, Batgirl and Catwoman. Let's see Catwoman is out. Possibly Huntress due to the fact that she is a good hunter. Maybe Batgirl. Wait she has an ice keki genkai. That's it Naruto thought as he typed in the word freeze as multiple links with freeze came up on the screen. He clicked on the first item as the screen changed to a picture of a person wearing a black and blue costume. He saw that the person upper torso was frozen and had red eyes. That should do. Kayubi said. Well let me go change into something appropriate, Naruto stated while he put on the red X suit. Wayne Manor. Tabuza and his group had arrived at Wayne Manor. They saw how huge the place was as well as how well hidden it was. Welcome, Red X stated as he jumped from the roof to where they were. So you're Red X? Zabuza questioned. Indeed I am. 
I need you to follow me, Red X replied as he took them to the front of a grandfather clock. We're going to talk here. Gaozu questioned. Not at all Red X replied as he put in the time 1047. The grandfather clock moved to the side. As Red X started to walk down the stairs. Are you guys coming or what? Red X questioned as the group followed him. They saw the lights were coming on as they continued to walk down, as well as bats which started to fly as well. Could this be the bat cave? Zabuza thought to himself as they arrived to a platform in which of the bat symbol. Welcome to the bat cave, Red X stated as everyone was looking around. I never thought a place like this exist, Haku commented in awe, looking around at the items in the room. Well it does. Now I want you guys to go one by one onto the green platform over there, Red X stated, pointing to a circular platform. What will this do? Maizu asked. It will allow me to find the perfect suit for you. Red X replied as Zabuza stepped onto the platform first. The green platform came to life as green energy surrounded Zabuza's body until it died down. Zabuza stepped off the platform. All right then. Next person please, Red X asked as Maizu went. Gaozu followed after with Haku going last. Now then. As you know I am wearing a costume that Naruto gave me. The platform was able to measure your body structure so that I can modify the costumes to fit you. You will only be able to go into the bat cave when I give you permission alright. I still do not trust you yet so you'll have to earn it. As you can see the Wayne Manor is huge and you can stay here if you want to. Naruto went into town to take care of some business so he should be back, Red X stated coldly. So what are our jobs? Zabuza questioned Red X as there were four images that popped up on the screen. The first image was Mr. Freeze. The second one beside Mr. Freeze was a person wearing an all-white suit and had a medium built. The thing that stood out the most was that they wore a black mask that covered his entire face except his red eyes. The third image was a person that wore black armor with yellow plating covering his lower torso. He also wore a yellow mask with red eyes. On the person's back was what looked like a yellow jet pack. The fourth person wore black and dark orange armor, with a number one on the his right breastplate. These are your alter egos. Haku will take on the role as Ms. Freeze. Maizu will take on the role of number one who works for Black Mask. Zabuza will be Black Mask. Well Gaozu will become Firefly, Red X stated with a click of a button. So when do we get our suits? Zabuza asked. You and Maizu can pick up your costumes and armor now. Black Mask suit was a one-size suit, while number one's was mostly armor, Red X stated as he pointed to the cloths that Black Mask and number one wore. The two picked up their costumes. You'll be performing missions under these attires. You'll answer to your codename when you are out on the field. Zabuza is in charge of getting information, interrogation, and taking out these so-called ninja organizations that are popping up. Maizu's your second in command. You two will need to hire men to work for you so, I suggest you hire some loyal people. Maybe go to the mist. Bowzu will be our scouter. He will be in charge of looking over this village to see if there are any threats. Haku will be a hired mercenary with me as well. Red X looked at everybody in the room to see if they got it. They all nodded in recognition. I have no problems with my job, Zabuza replied with an eerie grin. Me neither. In fact it sounds good, Gaozu chuckled loudly. I might be able to use my fire affinity. I agree. This number one guy sounds like me, Maizu with an evil grin of his own. What missions are we going to go on Red X? Haku asked the warrior in front of her. I have to wait until I get them, Red X replied coldly. Well I'm taking a room upstairs, Zabuza stated with a yawn. I'll stay in the hideout. Maizu pipped up. I'll go with my brother, Gaozu sighed. I'll stay here, Haku sweat dropped at the brother's behavior. All right then. The rooms are located in the eastern wing. The kitchen is on the main floor, Red X said as the group went back upstairs. Meanwhile, Haku used this opportunity to talk to Red X. Red X. Haku took a deep breath, is it possible if I could learn more about my person? Sure. I'll be down here to monitor you, Red X stated as he showed how Haku to use the bat computer. Haku learned a lot about Mr. Freeze. It was now late at night. Haku was now asleep in the chair to the bat computer. Red X carried her bridal style to an open room. I can't believe she was able to hide her figure with these baggy cloths, Naruto thought as he found a room for her. That's some sleep Naruto. Tomorrow you have to meet with Tezuna on the bridge. Kayubi stated as Naruto took of his costume and went to sleep. Next day. It was morning in Wave Village. Naruto was at the bridge early, seeing as him and Tezuna didn't have a specific time they were supposed to meet. Tezuna saw Naruto and greeted him. Hey Naruto. I have my supplier on their way now. Tezuna yelled happily as Naruto saw a female with short black hair and brown eyes. She was wearing a pair of black pants, a white shirt, and black sandals. In her hand was a clipboard with a few documents on them. Good morning Naruto-san. My name is Kame. You said that you are interested in using my business, Kame said in a strict professional tone. 
indeed I am. I need a lot of iron, metal, and men looking for work, Naruto replied in a laid-back cool tone of voice. I can do all that no problem. What do you have in mind? Kame smirked as Naruto pulled out a few sheets of paper with designs on them. This is going to cost you a lot of money. Are you sure you want my people to build you a new hospital as well as your building? Kame asked with a raised eyebrow. Yes I do. I have enough money for it so it'll be no problem. Hack total up the numbers and I'll pay you half now and half later. Naruto stated with a grin as she did the math. That's not a lot of money Naruto replied looking at the number. He thought it would be more, but that would only take about 30% of the money he stole from Gato. Well Naruto my men are here right now, so if we sign this paperwork we can start today. Naruto read the paperwork thoroughly looking for any loopholes as there were none. This was clean and healthy business. Naruto signed the papers. We'll begin building at once. Kame said with a smile. She clicked her pen and put her stuff away. They're building a hospital here. Tazuna asked shook at the blonde businessman. I believe the old one needs an upgrade, and once my business brings in people then there's no telling what we can do to wave Tazuna, Naruto gave the old man a smile. What does your business do anyway? Tazuna asked. We're trying to build a better tomorrow, Naruto replied. Well kid, the old man Tazuna slapped Naruto in the back, hard the bridge should be up in two days if my men keep going at this rate. Tazuna smiled at him back. Two days later. Noon had came for Wave Village. The Leaf Ninjas were glad that the bridge was up and now they could go home. Kakashi had made a recovery and was able to move without his crutches. Sure he had to take it easy a while, but they were able to leave anyways. Again thank you Leaf Ninjas for guarding me, Tazuna shook Kakashi's hand. Like a man. Anytime Tazuna. This was a great way for my team to get the experience they needed. Just as long as you remember to pay us later, Kakashi gave the old man an eye smile. Don't worry. I will, Tazuna replied. Seems like the dead last ran away, Sasuke smirked at not seeing his former classmate. Unlike you I've been productive, Naruto replied as he walked onto the scene. Sasuke was angry by that comment. Like you could have a business. You'll probably run it to the ground. Sakura replied as a few wave villagers were angered by her comment. Forehead, as Eno would call you. Please. Shut it. I do not want harm to come to us due to your mouth, Sai stated with his fake smile plastered on his face. I would listen to him Sakura. We'll take our leave now, Kakashi replied as the group left. Good to see them gone. I swear the pink-haired girl is annoying, Tsunami stated with a scowl. Well I have to go I have stuff to look after, Naruto said after a few moments of silence, leaving the group. Did you tell him we named the bridge after him? Inari questioned. He left before I could tell him. Sure enough he'll see the plaque. Tazuna stated. A month later. Wave village economy was booming. New people were moving into the area. New businesses were opening up. The villagers seemed like they were reborn again. The village itself had completely changed from when Gato was in control. Red X was on a branch in the forest which overlooked the village. He couldn't help but watch the construction of Kame's men working on his building. It was about 50% done. Naruto, a voice called. Red X turned around to see a female wearing a pair of black pants, black boots, and a black shirt that fit her figure. She wore white gloves, white greaves, and white gauntlets. She had snow white hair and wore a white face mask. Her eyes were blue. This was Ms. Freeze. Yes Haku? Naruto asked. As a month had passed and he could now trust Zabuza, Haku, Maizu, and Gaozu. Haku was able to use her ice manipulation to turn her hair white. She also learned a few new freezing abilities from the videos on Mr. Freeze. We have a mission from one of Zabuza's friends, Haku answered. As Black Mask now had a few connections in the shinobi world. Not a lot but it was impressive for a new person. Haku handed Naruto the mission scroll he opened the scroll and read what the mission entailed. Seems like we're going to Kaminari no Kuni. They seem to be having trouble with a couple of thieves, Naruto closed the scroll and threw in back to her. Kaminari no Kuni. That's pretty far from here, Haku commented as she caught the scroll. We can take the boat Gato gave me. Naruto smiled at that. You mean the one you stole, Haku retorted with a smile of her own. I'm a thief slash hero, alright. Naruto replied as he went down the tree with Haku following him. Well let's get to work then thief. I still want to know what you did with the money you stole from Gato, Haku giggled as they first went to the Batka by using the waterfall entrance. They changed into their regular cloths. Naruto wore his black and blue business suit. Haku wore a pair of blue sandals, a blue skirt, and a white blouse. Her hair was down. They both were carrying a bag and a briefcase. In their bag was regular cloths for the trip, while in the briefcase contained their costumes. No one but them could open the briefcase because of the blood seals Abusa applied on them. So where is the boat? Haku asked. It's by the docks. 
I've been working on the boat ever since Tazuna talked about customizing the ships for the harbor, Naruto replied as he and Haku went towards the newly made boat. The boat itself was medium-sized. It had a white and blue paint job with a spiral on both sides of it. The boat had a lower part of it in which there were two rooms where people could sleep in. Nice boat, Haku commented. It has another feature, Naruto replied as the two boarded the boat. As Naruto turned the key into the ignition. The boat came to life. You changed the engine. If I remember this engine was an old model, Haku stated with an all look in her face. Naruto nodded. I had Suchi and Kame help me out with this project. They told me about chakra crystals in which a person pumps chakra into them and uses it for their own use. Most of the time people use chakra crystals to store chakra into weapons they make. I took that idea and applied it to the engine. This engine is powered by chakra. The key I used to start the boat uses its own chakra to power the engine. I also made an autopilot feature for the ship. There are few more things I did to this boat, but I'll reveal them when the time's right, Naruto sat down and grabbed the wheel. Well let's go. Naruto put his foot on the pedal as the two were now off to Kaminari no Kuni. Harbor in Kaminari no Kuni capital. The entire day on sea but they were here. Naruto and Haku arrived in a port near the Kaminari no Kuni capital. The two docked the ship and were now making their way to see Zabuza's friend. The two decided to go find a hotel to stay there, since their new mission might take a while. Hotel. Naruto and Haku were able to get a one-room suite. The room had two beds, a mini-fridge, a bathroom with a tub and shower. The two unpacked their stuff before they decided to get to business. Alright Haku. From what the mission scroll stated we should be meeting with a person who goes by the name of Aoi Kazunchi. If my personal information is correct then he works for the daimyo of this country. Naruto stated. How do we approach Aoi? Haku questioned the blonde leader. He will be looking for Red X and Ms. Freeze. So, I suggest we suit up before we leave here Naruto replied to Haku who nodded and went to change. It took her a few minutes before she was now in her Ms. Freeze attire. Naruto also had changed in the room while she changed in the bathroom. The duo then jumped out the hotel window and made their way to the Daimyo Temple. Daimyo Temple. The temple itself was surrounded by different sized pillars. You could hear the sounds of swords clashing and the smell of smoke. The smoke seemed to be coming from within the temple itself. The two noticed that most of the people didn't pay any attention to it, so they guessed it was something that happened every day. The two heard footsteps and went on guard. The person coming towards them was wearing black and yellow samurai armor with a black helmet. This was Aoi Kazunchi. The leader of the daimyo's thunder guard. The thunder guard are made up of a group of both ninjas and samurais who want to protect and serve their daimyo at all cost. You must be Black Mask's friends. Aoi questioned the two. I take it you must be Aoi right? Haku replied to Aoi who nodded. Indeed I am. Can I have your names please? Aoi asked. My name is Red X. The woman besides me is Ms. Freeze, Naruto answered. I take it there is a Mr. Freeze then? Aoi asked. Not anymore, but I live on for him, Haku replied. Well I'm sure you two want to know who you are after, right? Aoi asked the two. Of course we do, Red X replied. Well as of lately there have been numerous thieves in the entire area. Aoi continued to state the country's problem. And why do you want us exactly Aoi? Red X asked coolly. Simply because they are stealing priceless artifacts that the daimyo wants back. Aoi replied. So you're hiring us because you can't catch them huh? Haku realized. I'm not the one in charge of your contract. That would be the daimyo himself. I don't see why we need mercenaries to help us catch a couple of common thieves. Besides we have bigger things that we need to accomplish. Aoi stated coldly. Like winning your war with the rebel faction. Haku replied with a smirk. How do you know that? Aoi questioned the Ice Princess angrily. Who doesn't know about that? Anyone who is loyal to the Sandame Raikage is here in the capital, while those who hated him and want a new Raikage live in the village. Naruto replied calmly. Now do you see my point? We have a war to win, but the Daimyo is worried about these so-called thieves. They don't even have the courage to face us in battle. Aoi stated. When you're a thief you live by a different set of rules, but even so, rules are meant to be broken, Naruto replied to Aoi as he pulled out a scroll. Look here mercenaries. This is all the information about this group of thieves that we have as well as half of the payment. Just make sure that you get the job done and have them dead or alive, and the rest of the money is yours. Personally I just want you to get the job done Aoi stated in a serious tone. He gave the scroll to Naruto. We will alright. You go back to your war and leave catching the thieves to us. Naruto replied. See here kid. I don't need backtalk from a hired hand. Aoi stated as he was now angered by Red X's comment. That's not what the daimyo thinks. Naruto said as Aoi was about to strike Naruto, but Haku intervened by grabbing his hand. Aoi, please go back to your duty. 
We will accomplish our mission, Haku stated. You better. Aoi replied as he went back to the daimyo's temple. You just had to egg him on didn't you? Haku questioned Naruto. Of course I did but he was the one who fell for it. Naruto replied to Haku. Well let's go back to the hotel and get started on this Haku stated as she grabbed Naruto and used a water shushin to transport the two back to the hotel. Hotel. The two went back to their civilian cloths. Naruto was in his black and blue suit while Haku wore her teal kimono. Naruto had most of the information they received from Aoi scattered on the beds. Let's see from this information they are a group of people. Haku stated as Naruto nodded. From the reports there it seems to be two people that actually do the heist, while the other guard the perimeter in case someone tries to stop them, Naruto replied to Haku. There seems to be pictures of everyone except the two main people. Naruto said as he was looking at the images of the other people. On the pictures there were images of their faces. One face was a male who had white spiky hair, black eyes, and had brown skin. On his forehead was a kumo hide. Another face was a female who had brown skin, yellow eyes, long red hair, and had on a kumo bandana with the hide on it. The last image was a face of a female who had blue eyes, short blonde hair that framed their face, and had ivory skin. These were the people that guarded the perimeter while the two thieves did their thing. So the people here can't get past these three to even come close. Haku stated. And they expect to win a war. Naruto commented, going over the information. Seems like there are a few more things they may want to steal. Haku stated looking at a few notes that Daimyo had put into the scroll. I guess their method of operations would be stealing weapon artifacts. Naruto said looking at what they stole. They may be selling the items to help the rebels maybe. Haku stated, trying to find their reason for stealing. I could only guess. How come the rebels haven't made their move yet? From what I know they have both the two and eight tail Jinchuriki. Naruto said. They may not know how to control them Naruto. Haku replied. Which reminds me that I need to start learning how to use Kikbi's chakra again. In case things start to go south while we're here Naruto said suddenly. You're right about that. Your control went back being able to use the cloak before losing control. I know Kikbi, Naruto thought. Naruto. I suggest we wait until nightfall before we suit up and make our moves around town Haku suggested. I agree. From what these reports say the thieves heist are always at midnight. I say we explore the town as civilians and possibly get some lunch, maybe. Naruto replied. Are you asking me out on a date Naruto? Haku questioned as Naruto blushed a little. I guess you can call it that Haku. Naruto replied smoothie. Well come on then. Haku said as the two left the hotel room and went sightseeing. Hey did you guys hear? The daimyo has hired someone to try to bring us in, a male with white hair, brown eyes, and brown skin stated. He wore a dark green shirt with a hood with red bandages on his forearm, a pair of black shinobi pants, black shinobi sandals, and shin guards. On his back was a long sword with a white hilt with red diamonds on the side of it. He had a green lollipop in his hand. This is Amoy. You know he always tries to hire someone to bring us in, but everyone fails. Another person replied as it is a female. She too had brown skin but had yellow eyes and long red hair. She wore a dark green long short sleeved dress. She had on her flank jacket as well as a pair of boots with a white bottom on them. On her back was a long sword just like Amoy's. This is Carrie. You make it seem like you want to be caught another voice said in a cold tone, as this person had short blonde, blue eyes, and ivory skin. She was currently wearing a very low-cut outfit with mesh armor underneath it, a short skirt, red hand guards, and high boots. She also wore her kumo flank jacket, as well as a sword which was strapped horizontally to her lower back. This is Samui. Has anyone been close to catching us a female voice stated. She had long blonde hair which was in a long ponytail, she wore a pair of black fitting pants, black shinobi sandals, and a grey shinobi shirt. She had on a pair of black gloves as well. This is Yujito Nai. One of Kumo's two jinch crickets. Not at all but who knows maybe these guys will give us a challenge. A final person replied. He is a male and had spiky black hair which had white tips and black eyes. He wore a pair of blue pants, a blue vest, a grey shirt, as well as blue shinobi sandals. His name is Jaku. Currently Jaku was shuffling some playing cards. Jaku you've been saying that for the longest. Yujito exclaimed. I know I have, but what's the point in being a thief if there's no one to chase you, Jaku shrugged. Like that will be the day, Carrie snorted. Who knows Carrie? Well I'm going to walk around town. Let me know if you hear from B alright. I've been hearing that the rebels are just about ready to invade the capital, and you know good old Jaku don't want to miss that. Jaku said as he walked out the door. Daku is a wild one, Amoy stated with his hand in his chin. Well he is good at what he does so you can't take that away from him, Samui replied, rubbing her shoulders. I just hope this will be the final pull, so that we can end this once and for all, Carrie said as the others were tired of being away from their village. 
Let's just hope Killer B has some good news. I growing tired of wearing this tight black bodysuit. Yujito replied. It looks amazing on you Yujito, Amoy stated as he remembered how well the suit fit on her. Along with the claw gloves. If only she decided to wear the heels, but hey that's what dreams are for. Shut it Amoy. Kerry yelled at her teammate. Don't hit me for speaking the truth. I still don't get why Samui can't wear it. Amoy replied thoughtfully. Due to the fact that I chose not to, Samui replied. That and it probably would have ripped. Yujito stated causing Amoy to burst out laughing. Not funny Yujito, Samui laughed sarcastic. It's. So. True, Amoy said in between laughs as he now saw Samui approach him with her sordid hand. Run Amoy. Yujito shouted as Amoy left the safe house they were in. He'll come back Samui stated as she was about to teach Amoy a lesson he would soon not forget. With Naruto and Haku. We now meet with the duo, who were currently walking down the row of businesses established in the capital. So many different places, Haku stated as the smell of food hit her nose. You can say that again. Makes you wonder where we should start Naruto replied as he, too, started to smell some food cooking. I say we go eat then see what's around here, Haku suggested to Naruto who nodded as the two were now going towards a restaurant known as the Thunder Cloud. Thunder Cloud Restaurant. The two arrived at the restaurant. From what they could see it was a bar and grill sort of restaurant. The smells of the food was great. They even have a corner where people could play cards. You could hear some people talking about the current card game that was going on. Naruto and Haku decided to go see what the fuss was about. Card table. Now ladies and gentlemen. I know I can get a decent card game out of someone around here. I'll even cut them some lack. The first game no money will be wagered. I guess you can say I'm being friendly for the moment. Jaku stated as he was shuffling some playing cards. No way I'll play you. You come in and take everyone's hard-earned money. A person yelled in response to Jaku's open challenge. People know the risk when they mess with a gambler like myself. It's not my fault they just bad at playing cards Jaku replied coolly. I'll take a shot, Naruto stated as some of the people turned around to see who it was. Haven't seen you around these parts before. Jaku replied thoughtfully. What can I say it's my first time being here. My name is Naruto, Naruto replied as Jaku nodded. My name is Jaku. So what card game do you want to play then? Jaku questioned. Anything. Naruto replied as the two started playing cards. The card game went on for 20 minutes until Jaku was able to win. You're pretty good Naruto. Better than most the people in the capital. Jaku stated. Glad you think so. I'm going to go get something to eat Naruto replied. Well if you ever need someone to show you around this place. Just came find me Jaku said as Naruto got up from the table and went to find Haku who was reading a menu at a table for two. How was the game? Haku questioned as Naruto went to sit down. It was fun. He was able to beat me though, Naruto replied. Well at least no money was involved, Haku said to Naruto. I have to do that again sometime. Well let's order something to eat, Naruto stated as the two called a waitress over and order some food to eat. The two had a light conversation about their thoughts on Kumo so far before the food came. Once that happened the two ate and paid for the food. Naruto went to find Jaku who at the moment was about to get into a fight with a group of people. Look guys you lost fair and square. Now please go, Jaku replied coolly. Not until you give us our money back one person stated. We'll use force if we have to, another said. You guys lost just come back another day and I'll play you again, Jaku replied. That's it. Get him boys. A third person yelled as the group of five charged at Jaku. I really hate it when this happens. Oh well, Jaku sighed as he used a pool stick and started to defend himself against his opponents. A few minutes later the fight was over with all of Jaku's opponents on the floor. You're good, Naruto commented on Jaku's bijutsu skills. I try when I have to, Jaku replied as he put the pool stick back where it was supposed to be. This guy's is pretty good at using bijutsu. He reminds me of the third Hokage, Haku thought to herself as she approached Jaku. Hello Jaku. Haku stated getting the bijutsu user's attention. Hello beautiful. How might I help you today? Jaku asked smoothly to Haku. I was wondering if you could give me and Naruto a tour of the capital, Haku replied Jaku. No problem. Come follow me you too, Jaku stated as the group of three toured the capital. The three were almost done with the tour until they saw a few carriages come into the town. Talk about fancy, Haku stated, seeing the different colored carriages. Each carriage has their own signature design and color. Looks like the daimyo is having a party, Naruto replied. Seems like he is throwing a big gathering judging by the symbols on the carriages, Jaku commented as the carriages seem to be coming from different villages from across the elemental continent. I hope he doesn't mind party crasher, Naruto, Haku, and Jaku thought simultaneously as they continued their walk until they were outside of the museum. 
Well this is the last stop before we part ways. I want to show you guys the museum here. Jakku stated as the group walked into the three-leveled museum. Naruto and Haku noticed how many samurai as well as ninjas were inside of place. Place has a lot of security. Naruto commented. Well there are a few thieves that tend to steal from here Jakku replied. I heard about that from a samurai who stated they cannot catch them Haku stated. I guess they are just that good Jakku said as they continued walking around and started to see more exhibits with Jakku who gave explanations as to what the object was in its history. Most of these things are interesting. Naruto commented to Jakku who nodded as they were now on their way out of the museum. Well Naruto and Haku. This is where we part ways. Hopefully we will be able to meet again in the future, Jakku stated to the two. I have a feeling we will, Naruto replied as Jakku started to walk away from the two. Daku is nice. Haku stated offhandedly. Pretty cool guy if you ask me. Naruto agreed. Seems like the daimyo's party is going to be big. Haku commented. I hope he doesn't mind us crashing the party. Naruto grinned. As who exactly? Haku questioned with a raised eyebrow. I guess we can go as ourselves. Bring your costume just in case. Naruto shrugged. Where are we going to put them? A dress can hide only so much, Haku asked. I've been reading about how old seal masters used to use the henge no jutsu. They would make make a seal on an object. Like a watch or a necklace and seal their cloths into it. Then the person would say the word henshin. Once they say that the seals from the object it would spread over the person's body. The seals are covered in chakra so you would not see the seals. Naruto suddenly said. How did Bruce and his superhero friends overcome this? Haku questioned again. Well Bruce said that Superman always wore his cloths under his regular cloths. Green Lantern Ring stored his cloths while the Flash used some type of ring. Bruce always suited up at the back of before he did anything. Naruto replied. So can you make the seals then? Haku asked. Give me two hours and it should be done. Naruto grinned again as the two went back to the hotel room. Haku opened up her other suitcase, which had her suit in it. She gave the suit and a necklace with a snowflake on it to Naruto who immediately got to work. I'm going to out to see who else is attending this party. Haku stated as she left the room leaving Naruto to his seals. Two hours later. Haku returned back to the hotel to see Naruto, who had a grin on his face. I take it you did it right. Haku asked Naruto who gave her the snowflake necklace back. Try it, Naruto offered to Haku as she put the necklace on. Tension, Haku whispered as she felt chakra come out of the necklace. The chakra covered her entire body for a few seconds before the chakra died down to reveal Haku in her Ms. Freeze attire. This is great Naruto. Now, how do I take it off? Haku asked. Thus say power down and the suit will go back into the necklace. Naruto replied coolly. Power down, Haku whispered again as the suit seemed to shatter like glass to reveal Haku back into her regular attire once again. Well it worked. The only thing you have to do, well the seals does it work, is change your hair. Naruto commented as Haku nodded. Well while I was out I learned who is attending this party, Haku stated. Well come on then. Tell me, Naruto demanded playfully. The main guest for this party is the daimyo of Suna. The Tsuchikage himself as well as the leader of the Sound Village. Naruto seemed a little dumb folded. Sound Village? Who are they? Naruto questioned. From what I hear the village has been in the works for quite a while. They tried to get me, the Demon Brothers and Zabuza to join a month back, but we sent the recruits running. Haku replied. Well let's get ready for this party then. I have a feeling that this party is a cover-up. Kumo safe house. Daku had just walked into the house to see Amoy, who was laying on the floor with bandages on. It seemed like Samui got him pretty good. Kerui was sitting on the couch while Yujito was sitting on the window seal. I know what we're doing tonight. Jaku stated, getting the group's attention. What might that be? Yujito questioned the Bajutsu user. We have a party to crash. Jaku replied with a grin. Sounds like fun to me, Kerui shrugged as Samui came into the house. So what did the bee say? Jaku asked. He stated that he wants the final assault to be in about three days from now. He also wants us to infiltrate this party. Samui replied impassively. Thus. As in Jaku and I. Yujito questioned as Samui nodded. We're going to be there as well but only come out if we're needed. Also he wants you two to steal a weapon that is going to be there. Samui replied. Steal. Now you have my attention, Jaku said. What is the weapon? Yujito asked to Samui, who pulled out a scroll and opened it to reveal a double-sided blade. The blade is silver, while the hilt is black. The handguard of the blade had two silver wings. One on each side of the hilt. The wings seemed to be closed. That's Shippu Hain. If I'm right then there is really nothing special about the blade, except that the metal can cut through anything. Other than that, nothing special, Amway stated thoughtfully. I think that's the point that makes it so rare. 
It's one of the few blades that doesn't have a test you need to pass, as well as the fact that it's just a regular blade. People now and days believe a blade needs so many abilities. Well this blade is just a sword. Jaku replied. It looks very rusty if that what it looks like now, Yujito grimaced, looking at the image of the old and worn out blade. Well if he wants it then he must have some kind of reason. Jaku closed his eyes. How about you two go in person rather than in uniform? We'll be hiding outside if you need us. Kerry stated. Sounds good to me. Jaku replied as he had no complaints about taking Yujito to a party. Let's get dressed and let's get this thing done. I'm Yo's Palace 9 p.m. Multiple people were arriving at this party. Some rode in on their carriages while others walked there. This was about to be a party people would never forget. But Naruto and Haku. The duo were now inside the palace. Naruto was wearing a black suit with a white shirt, a black tie, and black dress shoes. He tried to comb his hair, but the spiky hair wasn't going to be combed. Naruto also had on a black watch with a red face on it. Haku was wearing a white dress that showed some of her figure. On her neck was her snowflake necklace on. She had on a pair of white pumps as well. Her hair was let down so it went to her mid-back. You look great Haku. Naruto commented to the ice user. You clean up nicely yourself Naruto. Haku commented back. Is that you Naruto? Jaku asked as the two turned around to see Jaku and his date. Jaku was wearing a suit just like Naruto's, except his shirt was crimson. His date on the other had looked beautiful in Naruto's eyes. She had long blonde hair that went to her lower back. She had a pair of nice brown eyes. She was wearing a black dress that showed some of her figure. She also had on a pair of black pumps. If it isn't Jaku and his beautiful date. Naruto replied as Yujito blushed a little at the comment. Thanks for the compliment. You don't look too bad yourself, Yujito said with a little purr at the end of her sentence. How about we all sit together during this party? Haku suggested. Sound like a great idea, Jaku replied as the four of them walked into the grand room together. Grand room? The grand room was huge. The decorations on the wall really showed how much time the daimyo put into this event. They noticed that where the daimyo was supposed to sit, there were a few tables on both sides of him. Those tables were for the important guest while the tables on the floor was for the guest to sit at. They heard the sound of music fill the room as well as the smell of the food. Big room, Naruto commented as they saw that multiple people were socializing. I guess this is the part where we meet new people, Jaku said with a smile. Well I wouldn't mind being with Naruto. If that's okay with you Jaku, Yujito fidgeted. Sounds good to me. Only if Naruto and Haku agree, Jaku replied with a wink. I wouldn't mind hanging out with Jaku more, Haku stated icily. Well I guess we switch dates for now, Naruto said as the group of four switched dates and went different ways. But Haku and Jaku. The two were walking around the grand room and saw a comedian telling jokes to a crowd. Judging by the way the people looked, he wasn't that funny. I'm way funnier than that guy, Jaku commented as a person turned around from the group and heard Jaku's comment. How about you tell me a joke? A person asked. I don't tell jokes, but I'm good at stories, Jaku replied. I would love to hear one of those, Jaku started telling the person a humorous story. A lot of people heard laughter coming from a person and walked over to see what was going on. A few minutes later, everyone from the old comedian's crowd was now around Jaku. And that's why you never say you trip into a woman's bosom. Jaku said as he now noticed just how many people were around him and Haku. He also noticed Haku had a cute laugh. Jaku? You have to be one of the most funniest people I know. Haku stated with small giggle. Do you really think so? Jaku questioned the ice user. I know so. Haku replied with the last giggle escaping her mouth. How about we go back to the table to get to know one another more? Jaku bowed, making Haku giggle once more. Let's go before they want an encore, Haku replied as the two left the circle and headed back to the table. With Naruto and Yujito. The current duo were having a light conversation. They were talking about where they were from. So, you were a part of the waves uprising then, eh? Yujito blinked seductively. You can say that I was more hands-on if anything else, but most of the credit goes to the villagers, Naruto replied. So, what are your plans for the future? Yujito questioned as the blonde had to think about it for a few seconds. I would have to say that my plans are to be able to help those when they need it. Naruto stated with a serious expression. Sounds nice. Yujito replied with a little giggle. How about you? Naruto questioned as he smiled flirtatiously at her. I would say that I want this war to come to an end. Yujito stated. Maybe that's what this party is for. Naruto replied. I do hope you're right Naruto, Yujito said as the two heard the band play another song that made multiple people dance. Can you dance Naruto? Yujito asked sincerely. I've never been to a dance like this before, but I'm a quick learner though, Naruto replied as he was looking at the dance the people were doing on the floor. 
Well come on then, Yujito stated as the two were now on the dance floor dancing. It took Naruto a few minutes to find his rhythm. I got it, Naruto was able to get into the hang of dancing. The two didn't notice that the crowd around them, watching the duo dance. The dance came to an end when the band stopped playing. Naruto and Yujito stopped dancing when the music ended. They noticed the crowd around them cheering for them. Wow, Naruto commented sheepishly as the crowd was clapping. Thank you, Yujito replied with a sarcastic bow. Anyways, let's go find Haku and Jaku, Naruto stated as the two went to find their friends who were currently sitting at one of the tables. Nice tango, Jaku stated to the two. Not you, too, Jaku, both the blondes whined. Jaku's just joking you too. Besides I'm sure you heard about the true comedian Haku stated, as the two blondes did hear about a person outstaging the hired comedian. Someone in the crowd had said something about it when the two passed them. Seems like this party was fun, Yujito stated. Being the life of the party does that Jaku replied coolly, as the group of four saw the lights in the room become dim, and a spotlight appeared on a person wearing a very fancy yellow and black kimono. He looked like he was in his late forties and had slightly tanned skin, spiky white hair, and green eyes. This is the current daimyo of Lightning Country. Good evening everyone. I hope that everyone is enjoying this party. For those who do not know I am Shibu. I am the current ruler of this country, and I have thrown this event in order to inform those that this is a charity event. Shibu stated. Charity to what? Naruto questioned as Shibu responded as though he heard Naruto. This is a charity event to the capital of course. We are in need of desperate funding. I am willing to sell a few of my personal artifacts in exchange for not only money, but friendship as well. Shibu stated. So, what artifacts might be going on sell exactly? The Atokage asked the daimyo. Well you're just going to have to wait and find out, Shibu replied as his guard started to bring out multiple items from the daimyo's personal vault. Jaku and Yujito noticed the last item was the ship Puhane. Look Naruto. Yujito and I are going to leave if this is a charity event. We forgot to bring our big bills. So we'll catch you two on the flip side. Bye Haku, Jaku said as the two left the party early. Well our first item we have is this scroll. Inside this scroll is a summoning contract for bats. Now who wants this Shibu stated as no one wanted the bat scroll due to the fact that too many rumors surrounded the summoning animals. Shibu told the guard to throw it out since it wasn't worth anything. Naruto wanted that scroll, they threw away, because it seemed to call him. The bat summoning contract and they throw it away. I need that scroll because the bat jet seems to be impossible to build. Besides bats are fun, Naruto thought to himself as he and Haku saw that when it came to the daimyo's gem collection, that's when the bids started to come in. Now it's time for the last item. This blade is known as the Shippuhane. Shibu stated as multiple bids for the blade started to go in. Again Naruto heard about the blade and wanted to restore it. He was now making plans on stealing it. Going once. Going twice Shibu was interrupted when an explosion hit the roof. I believe we will take the blade if you don't mind sir, a voice said from the roof. This person had combed brown hair and with glowing violet eyes. He wore black pants, a black sleeveless shirt, a brown trench coat, and blue boots. He also had blue shin guards, blue gauntlets, and blue gloves as well. In his hand was Joker card. This is Bakudo. And who might you be exactly? Shibu questioned the person on the roof. I am one of the two thieves you can't catch. The male replied coolly. So where is the other one? Shibu demanded again. Right here old man. Hope I don't give you a heart attack, another voice replied. She's a female who currently was wearing a black bodysuit which hugged her beautiful figure. She also had on black shinobi sandals as well as black gloves. She had long black hair and black colored eyes as well. On her waist was a gray utility belt which had smoke pellets as well as a few weapons, which were in sealed compartments. She also had a tail on her back, as well as a pair of yellow goggles which resembled a panther. This is Kuroyu. She could be the next catwoman, Naruto thought to himself seeing the beautiful girl on the roof. Well we will be taking that sword if you don't mind, Bakudo stated. What makes you think I'm going give it away? Shibu questioned angrily as his guard surrounded him. Fine then. We prefer the hard way, Kurohyu said as Bakudo's Joker card started to glow violet. Watch out kids, Bakudo stated as he threw the card at the floor below. When the card hit the floor it exploded. The two on the roof jumped down onto the floor. Just imagine what he could do with a handful ladies and gentlemen, Kurohyu replied as most of the people were out of the room. Most of the ninjas fled the scene since this was not their village. Only leaving Shibu and his guard there as well as a few guests that wanted to see a fight including Naruto and Haku. For those who don't know. I am Bakudo and this lovely beauty is none other than Kurohyu. Bakudo stated. Thanks for the introduction Bakudo. Now hand over the blade so we can go. Kurohyu demanded. Never. Shibu replied as he held onto the sword. Have it your way. Bakudo said as he pulled out another card from one of his pockets. 
of Naruto and Haku. Let's hurry up and change. Haku stated as the two went out of the room as they found a spot in which no one was around. Mention the two whispered as the seals did their thing. Naruto was now in his Red X attire while Haku was now Ms. Freeze. Let's go Red X, Haku stated as the two entered the room. Back in the grand room. Suit yourself then old timer. Bakudo. Blow him away. Kurohyu stated as Bakudo threw the glowing card directly at Shibu and his men. The card was a few feet away before a Red X shuriken hit it causing it to explode. Mind if we crashed the party? Red X asked coolly, entering the room. Don't answer that because we already did, Ms. Freeze replied icily, entering the room as well. More people in costumes? Kurohyu questioned. What can I say, they were on sale, Red X joked. Can we focus on our task Red X? Ms. Freeze asked impatiently. No problem Ms. Freeze. I was joking around, nothing serious, Red X replied. Red X, really? I mean Ms. Freeze I get but Red X. You could have came up with a better name. Bakudo commented. This coming from a guy who name is Bakudo. Couldn't you come up with a better name like Gambit or something, Red X replied as Bakudo thought about it. I told Amoy and Kerry that it was a stupid name. I'm going back to my great grandpa's codename, Bakudo thought to himself. You're right Gambit is better and no I'm not taking the name because you came up with it. Simply because that name was my great grandpa's name. Gambit replied. I only thought of that name because Bruce has files about another hero world. I started reading about the X-Men and how one was named Gambit. I hope this glowing trick is a Jinjutsu because if not I have my work cut out for me, Naruto thought to himself. And no this is not a Jinjutsu. This is a bloodline. Gambit stated. Is Freeze. Gambit has a bloodline which is dangerous. Can you deal with him? Red X asked. My abilities should be able to help me, Ms. Freeze replied. I get the girl Kurohyu. Gambit said to his partner. Go have fun with her. Let me and the guy with the X on his chest dance. Kurohyu replied with a feral grin. I'll try to make it quick Kurohyu. I know how much you like to play, Gambit stated with a slight chuckle. Luckily for you too I can play and dance. Red X replied. Will you fight them already? I can't believe I'm paying them for this. Shibu yelled. Look, we can leave you here to die and let your guard die by these two. So I suggest you sit back and be a good daimyo and go somewhere, Ms. Freeze snapped coldly at him. My type of girl. Follow me so we can do our thing, Gambit stated as he used a shushin to get to the roof. I'm up here share. Gambit said as Haku used an ice shushin to appear on the roof. Let's fight then, Ms. Freeze replied as she charged Gambit. Let's dance beautiful, Red X stated as Kurohyu charged at Red X. The daimyo, his elite guard as well as a few other looked on at this ballroom fight which was about to happen. The sound of explosions filled the rooftop. At the moment was on defense while Gambit was on a fence. Currently Ms. Freeze was hiding behind a statue on the roof. I need a plan and fast. Haku thought while Gambit was holding a few cards in his hand. You can come out now. Trust me this won't hurt a bit Gambit stated trying to lure out Dot. I could use some of my senbans to try to hit a few pressure points. Haku thought gathering a few senbans from her pouch on her hip. Where is she? Jaku thought while looking around the rooftop. Here we go. Haku thought as she threw a few senbans at Gambit with great accuracy. Gambit heard something sail towards him and moved just in time. He turned around to see that there were senbans lodged into a statue that was behind him. Senbans. If she were to hit me with those I would be in bad shape. Looks like I'll have to stay on my toes with this one Jaku thought while turning towards the directions the senbans came from. The cards in his hand started to glow violet. Multiple statues are on the roof. I can use those for cover until I come up with a better strategy Haku thought while she used her speed to move to a different statue. We can play the hard way then. Gambit shouted while throwing a few of his cards. The cards hit the statue Haku was at a few seconds ago and exploded. I have about six statues left including this one. I just may have to use my side project after all if this doesn't work. Haku thought to herself while she pulled out a summoning scroll with the Kajin for freeze. I just hope it doesn't come to that Haku thought again while putting the scroll back on a slot on her left hip. Come on beautiful. I can do this all night. Gambit boasted while drawing a few more cards out while Haku was going through hand signs. Hit and miss technique Haku thought while the air around the roof started to become covered in fog. I hope Yujito can hurry up. This is going to take a while. Jaku thought while putting his cards away and pulling out his bow staff and slipped into a defensive position. Grand room. Red X and Kurohyu were currently at a standstill. Both of them seemed to be able to counter the other moves. Some of the audience were watching in interest seeing both of these masked people go at it. Damn she is good. Being able to counter some of my blows. Seems like I may have to start training in Bruce's style sooner than I thought. Naruto thought while looking at his opponent. 
He was currently using Robin's fighting style which used grace and fluent moves. Bruce's style dealt with powerful blows and not wasting movement. These is pretty good. Has it been that long since I had to fight someone? Yujito thought while looking at her opponent. Most of the time this battle would have been over, but seeing this person keep up with her was something new. Sounds like you need to get back into Tajutsu training once we meet with Hachibis and Churiki again. Nibi stated to her host. I haven't been slacking. Yujito thought to herself while laying her opponent through her goggles. I know that. Maybe it has been a while since you've been pushed in a fight. Nibi replied. If you want to give up you can. Red X stated getting Yujito's attention. Sorry but I don't see myself doing that. Kurohyu replied while she was grabbing onto her tail which came off. Hope you don't mind. Kurohyu said as she held onto the whip. Not at all. Red X replied getting into a defensive position. Good because this will be your end. Kurohyu stated while the whip had lightning around it. It conducts chakra. This may take a while. Red X thought to himself while looking around for anything he could use. He spotted the ship Buhain and remembered the few Kenjutsu lessons Abusa taught him. It may not have been much, but something is better than nothing. Shibu toss me the ship Buhain. Red X yelled while Kurohyu lashed out with her lightning whip at Red X who dodged. What? Boy are you crazy? Shibu asked the masked person. Look you hired me and my partner. We can simply leave and let Kurohyu and Gambit kill you and destroy your place. Red X replied while dodging more of Kurohyu's assault. Fine boy. Just give it back to me. Shibu said while throwing the ship Buhain which was in its sheath high into the air. Kurohyu used her whip to try to get the blade. Red X jumped into the air in order to grab the blade. Red X was able to grab the blade just before Kurohyu's whip got it. What is your name boy? A voice asked Red X who was trying to figure out where it came from. The ship Buhain boy. The voice said didn't know this blade had a spirit inside of it. He knew he had to be truthful when it came to spirits. Naruto Namikas. Naruto thought as he saw Kurohyu's whip come towards him again and moved out the way. So Naruto. What have you gotten yourself into? Shippu asked. How about you talk to Kayubi? I have my hands full. Naruto thought while moving away from another hit. I'll talk to the fox later. Right now Naruto I want you unsheath my blade. Shippu stated as Naruto did just that. The current audience and Kurohyu looked at the old rusted blade. You plan on beating me with that? Kurohyu asked. Channel your chakra into me and fight Shippu stated while Naruto channeled his chakra into the blade. Hoping that this will work. The wings that were folded were now opened. The rusted metal was now restored to its former glory. The audience and Kurohyu were now gasping at how the once rusted blade was now brand now. Once this fight is over Naruto. You and me are going to have to talk, Shippu said as Naruto nodded. Don't be afraid now beautiful. I'm just getting warmed up. Red X stated while charging a Kurohyu who had put the whip back at the tail and started to go on the defensive. Jaku. I hope you can hurry up. I may have to use Nibi's chakra on this guy Yujito thought while dodging the sword slashes. Haku come on. I'm not that great with Kinjutsu. Naruto thought while using what Zabuza had taught him in order to fight. Rooftops. The mist was now covering the entire roof. Haku at the moment had the advantage against her opponent. She hoped that she would be able to keep this up. Time for some hit and run tactics Haku thought while she gathered some senbans in both her hands and started to make her move. Time for me to focus. I don't want to waste my card seeing as I can't see nothing in this mist. Where the hell is Samui Amoy and Kari? Jaku thought to himself wondering where his teammates were. Jaku heard the sound of static coming from one of his pockets. He remembered he had a radio on him. He put the piece in his ear and put the radio on the team's channel. Jaku are you there? The voice of Samui filled his right ear. I hear you loud and clear. Where are you three? Jaku questioned his teammates. Currently we are en route to your location. We were ambushed by these ninjas with a musical note. Samui replied to Jaku. Music note? Jaku questioned again. Yes, Jaku. They seem to be attacking other village shinobi as well. Look Jaku will be there in about 5 minutes alright. Also there are about 5 music shinobi that are en route to your location. They seem to be the stronger ones so be on guard. Samui replied. Don't worry. I'll be careful alright. If things get too bad you'll start seeing fireworks. Jaku stated. Fine then. Samui said as Jaku heard a click which meant the radio frequency was off. Here I go Haku thought while she started her plan. She threw multiple senbans at Gambit who was using his bow staff to hit the senbans that were going in his direction. Try harder. Gambit stated while Haku released more senbans at a fast speed. The senbans seemed to be coming from everywhere in his mind. They just don't stop coming. Jaku thought as he decided to spin his bow staff to block most of the senbans. I may have to use it. Haku thought as she felt four shinobi enter her mist. At the same time Jaku felt four chakra signatures approach him. 
Are you the four music shinobi I've been hearing about? Gambit asked the new people. And what if we are dumbass? A voice replied through the mist. I was just making it clear that I'm not working with you. Gambit replied. Not like we wanted to work with you anyway. Another voice replied. Well then. Miz freeze. Could you move this mist? I want to see the new competition. Gambit asked as the mist was now gone. Both Gambit and saw four people dressed in a uniform which they believed came from their village. They noticed that there was a redhead who was the only girl on their team. One seemed to be a huge person, while another had six arms, and the last one seemed to have two heads on their body. Who are you talking to? The one with six arms asked. I want to say the wind, but I would be lying. Gambit replied to the sound four. Look move or be move. The one with two heads stated. I can't comply with that request. Gambit replied to the four while putting a few of his cards in his hand while they started to glow violet. Looks like we get to fight again. The one with six arms stated. Their funeral. Gambit stated throwing the cards towards the ground around the four shinobi. They thought nothing of it until they exploded. The group of four were sent through the roof. Gambit felt Ms. Freeze appear behind him. You got me. Gambit stated to her. I believe that for the time being we team up. Haku said to Gambit who was confused. Why should we team up? Not that I have a problem teaming up with a deadly Kanachi like yourself. Gambit replied. Simply because they are going to go after our teammates and I for one watch my partner's back stated. I do the exact same thing. Gambit replied to the Ice Maiden. Well let's go then. Said while she jumped through the newly made hole in the roof. I like this girl Jack who thought to himself jumping through the new hole in the roof. Brand ROOM a few minutes before the new hole in the roof appeared. You have stamina. Red X stated to Kurohu. As the two were now at a stance still again. It seems that Yujito was able to figure out his style. I can say the same for you Kurohu replied to her enemy. As Kurohu heard a radio static. She quickly put the radio headpiece in her right ear. Go for it Yujito stated through the radio. There are five music shinobi approaching your location. Amoy voice replied through the radio. Did you tell Jaku about this? Yujito asked. Samui is radioing Jaku as we speak. Look Yujito. You may have to use Nibi's chakra. These guys are strong especially a guy who use bones. They seem unbreakable Yujito. Amoy stated. I will. How far are you guys from here? Yujito asked. Five minutes away tops. Amoy replied. See you here. Yujito said turning off the radio and putting it back into her pocket. I wonder who C was talking to. Hopefully it's not reinforcements Naruto thought to himself. As he noticed that she had a radio on her. Naruto. Be ready. I have a feeling someone is coming. Shippu stated. It's always more people Naruto thought while getting ready for anything. A few seconds later a person appeared. Both Red X and Kurohu noticed this person was had shoulder length white hair which framed his face pale skin green eyes. From the way he wore a lavender loose fitting long sleeved shirt. The pair of black pants which was cut off at his mid calf and had grey bandages that went down from his mid calf to his ankle. Finishing up his attire has had black shinobi sandals. Who's the new guy Kurohu? Red X asked his opponent. I thought he would be with you. Kurohu replied. I am associated with the Sound Village. The Atokage wants to offer his shinobi services to you Daimyo Shibu as a sort of alliance if you speak. The shinobi from the Sound Village stated. What is your name Shinobi-san? Shibu asked. Tamimuro Kagaya. He replied to the Daimyo of Kaminari no Kuni. Well Red X I have bad news. You are fired. Kamimuro I want you to eliminate both Red X and Kurohu. Also I want you to tell your Kage that he has a personal meeting with me tomorrow at 3 o'clock. Shibu stated. I will be sure to inform him. Kamimura replied as there was a loud explosion that caused a part of the roof fell onto the floor. Four sound shinobi were now on the floor. While Ms. Freeze and Gambit appeared near their partner. Wow you sound shinobi are real professional. Falling through the roof like that. This really shows your shinobi prowess. Her Red X mocked the four sound ninjas who fell through the roof. We'll show you who's better. The six armed person replied. Hidemaru shut up Kamimura stated to his teammate. So do your teammates have names or do I have to start making up names? Gambit asked. My name is Seiken and my brother is Yukin. The big guy is Jirobo. The girl is Taya Seiken stated introducing the sound five. Name is Freeze. We have been fired from our services. Red X informed his partner. I understand. All things must come to an end. Replied. How about you guys find us after this thing is over? Gambit stated to Red X and Dot. Enemies one day allies the next. Alright fine by me. Red X replied as Samui Amoy and Kari appeared on the scene as they stood beside Gambit and Kurohu. Red X pulled out a few flash pellets so they could make his escape. Let's leave shall we? 
Kurohyu stated as she threw down multiple smoke pellets which covered the whole room in a black smoke for a few seconds. The sound 4 minus Kamimro charged towards the lightning group. The smoke cleared to reveal that Gambit and his friends left the scene. We can get the other two. Seiken stated as Red X and left the scene as well. Damn it. Taiya cursed while Kamimro was interested as to how fast the two groups were able to leave the scene. I didn't feel them leave. I hope this disease is not getting to me. Kamimro thought to himself as he was fighting a disease that affected his entire body. But Red X and Dot. Thanks to Kurohyu's smoke screen. Red X was able to teleport the two out of there. He wanted to be able to leave like Bruce used to do. One minute he was there a second later gone. The two were currently at the bottom of the hill the Daimyu's temple. Nice blade Red X Ms. Free stated while well, Red X sheathed the sword. A ship Puhane is a great blade. Red X replied as he saw a dumpster. He started to walk towards it. What are you doing Red X? Asked her partner who currently was searching for something. Found it. Red X stated holding up the bat summoning contract. The scroll was black with a white bat symbol on it. It was rather small compared to other summoning contracts. It's not that big. Replied. I know but I think that's what make it special. Red X said putting the scroll on a clip on his utility belt. Let's leave before the sound ninjas try to find us. Replied while Red X nodded in agreement. The two left and went towards the hotel they were staying at. Next day. It was morning in lightning country. Sure enough the Daimyu is running damage control today. Seeing as this is an incident that he doesn't want the other ninja villages to know about. Good morning Naruto. Haku greeted as Naruto was currently dresses in his training cloths, which was a white tank top black shorts and white tennis shoes. Morning Haku. Naruto replied to her as she went to take a shower and got dressed into her training cloths, which consist of a pair of black shorts a light blue shirt and black tennis shoes. Naruto was able to make the group a few pair of tennis shoes, thanks to Bruce leaving instructions on how to make them. What's the plan for today? Haku asked her partner. Infiltrate Shibu's meeting with the Satoka Gay. Naruto replied. I'll try to see where this meeting is seeing as you we destroyed the Daimyu's palace. Haku said as Naruto nodded. We'll meet back here around 1 o'clock then. Naruto suggested. See you then Naruto. Haku replied as the two left the hotel room and went their separate ways. But Naruto. It was noon in Lightning Country. Naruto was currently sitting on one of the many mountains in Lightning Country. This mountain actually had a few trees. It's been one night. So many things and so many people. Looks like I have a lot of research to do. Hopefully I may see Yujito today Naruto thought as he saw Yujito, who looked like she had just finished doing a run. She was wearing a light yellow shirt black shorts and black shinobi sandals. Hey Yujito. Naruto called to the other blonde who was walking towards him. What are you doing up here Naruto? Yujito asked. I just finished a jog and found this spot. What about you? Naruto asked her. I was just finishing up my run up here. Yujito replied. Hey Yujito. Have you ever noticed that building over there? Naruto asked as he pointed to what looked like a castle which was built on a mountain not far from this one. That place. I've only heard a myth about it, but I'm not sure if it's true. Yujito said to Naruto. What might those myths be exactly? Naruto asked his fellow blonde who took a seat next to him. Well the myth about that place is that it has been in Kumo forever. They say this place has been there before the clan wars. I believe that no one has been able to get in there. Some have tried but a lot of them have failed. Yujita replied. Sounds pretty cool. Naruto stated. I have a feeling you would say something like that Naruto. Yujito said. Hey Yujito. It's about lunch time and I was wondering if you would like to go get lunch with me. Naruto asked as he was blushing a little bit. Sure Naruto-kun. I wouldn't mind at all. Yujito said to Naruto. It's Naruto-kun now. Naruto replied as Yujito blushed a little. I can go back to calling you Naruto if you want. Yujito said. I don't mind at all Yugi-chan. Naruto replied to her. Come on then. I'll race you back to town then. Yujito stated while she stood up and Naruto got up as well. Ready. Set. Go Naruto shouted as the two ran back into town. With Haku. Haku had just finished testing out what was in her freeze scroll. She was currently going towards a restaurant that she saw on her way towards the river. It worked out great. I just hope that I'm able to test it out on someone soon. Haku thought while holding onto the scroll. What might a beautiful girl like yourself be doing out here? A voice stated as Haku turned around to see Jaku. Hey Jaku. Haku greeted while Jaku walked towards her. What were you doing out here? Jaku asked. I was just seeing what type of herbs were near the river. Haku replied. Herbs? You're into that doctor stuff. Jaku asked as Haku nodded. Of course. I kinda like having the ability to save people when I can. Haku stated. I understand that. I have a friend who's pretty good when it comes to that medical stuff. Jaku replied to her. 
Jaku was thinking about Samui who was pretty good with medical techniques. Hey Jaku. Would you mind accompanying me to lunch? Haku asked. You know I thought the guy was supposed to ask the girl out. Jaku asked. New generation Jaku. Haku replied. Hey I have no problem being your date Haku. Jaku said as the two went to a restaurant to get lunch. Restaurant. Haku and Jaku were almost to the restaurant when they saw two blondes running down the mountain slide. Is that Naruto and Yujito? Haku asked Jaku who was trying to get a better look. I believe so Haku and they're coming this way. Jaku replied. Well the two blondes made it to the restaurant. Both of them were currently out of breath. I won the race. Both blondes stated as they looked at one another. There's no way you won. The race wasn't even close. Both blondes said in unison. You guys okay? Jaku asked his friends. I won the race by a mile and you know it. Both Jinchuriki stated in unison again. Does it really matter? Haku asked. Yes and no. They both said while walking into the restaurant. Lunch was fun for the group of four as they were able to talk more about themselves as well as get to know the other people better. The group also overheard from a person who worked for Shibu that he was going to have his meeting at the oldest castle in Kumo, which was the castle Naruto and Yujito were talking about before they came here. This has been fun. Naruto stated to the three people he was currently with. You guys are some cool people. Jaku said. The bad we have to be somewhere. Haku replied. We can always hang out tomorrow. Yujito said. That sounds like a good idea Yugi-chan. Naruto said as Jaku heard the Yugi-chan comment and planned on telling his teammates once they got back to the safe house. Thanks for agreeing Naru-kun. Yujito replied while Haku couldn't wait to tell the people she considered family about this. I'll see you later Haku. Jaku stated as he and Yujito left the restaurant. Bye Jaku. Haku said. You know your father is going to kill Jaku right? Naruto stated as he knew what Zabuza could do firsthand. Keep it up Naru-kun. Haku mocked in a voice that sounded like Yujito's. Let's go back to the hotel. I have a letter that I need to send to Gaozu. Naruto stated. Did you try the bat summoning contract? Haku asked while they walked out the restaurant. I did and I was able to pass the test. Kuroi Hain who is the summoning king for the bats, didn't hold back at all in the test. He was happy that his clan would be able to become summonings again. Having Shippu Hain with me was a plus too. Naruto stated while they continued walking through the town. What did you have to do to pass the test? Haku asked Naruto. Face one of my worst fears. My parents hating me for what I have become. I had to remember that they would be proud of me no matter what I did, and with that resolve I passed. Naruto replied as the two were back at the hotel. How will you be able to use the bats during the day? Haku asked. There are a few special bats which has the ability to see during the day. Well most the clan shine at night. Naruto replied while they were now in the hotel room. Naruto summoned one of the faster and day flying bats known as Hei Hain. He instructed the bat to find Gaozu and give him a letter. Haku had a picture of what Gaozu looked like, as well as an idea of where he would be. Once Hei Hain had its orders, it flew at a fast speed. Now what do we do, Naruto? Haku asked her partner. Wait for Hei Hain. Naruto replied as an hour later Hei Hain appeared with a scroll on its back. Naruto feed the bat with a reward of apple slices. The Hei Hain went back to the summoning world with his fruit in tow. What's in the scroll Naruto? Haku asked while Naruto unrolled the scroll and pumped chakra into the seal. In a poof of smoke a black glove appeared. You wanted a new glove? Haku asked. This is a project me and your brother Gaozu been working on. These glove have a sensitive touch microphone on the middle and index finger, which allows the user to eavesdrop through solid surfaces. Naruto stated. So it's like the ability Terry McGinnis suit had right? Haku said. Exactly. Naruto replied. Then why don't you wear Terry's suit then? Haku asked Naruto. Due to the fact that the suit needs a lot of repairs. It's a one-size-fit-all suit, but it's going to take me a while to get it hooked up to the bat computer mainframe, and the fact that I like this suit a lot, and I don't plan on switching suits anytime soon. Naruto stated. Well then come on. The meeting starts at 3 and it's 2.20. Haku said as the two said henshin. Once they said that their suits were on and they were ready to go. Old Castle Mountain. The mountain the castle was on was huge. This castle had the most vegetation for some reason. The Daimyu was taking the main path which leads up to the castle's front door, well Red X, and were taking the back way in order to avoid being spotted. Why would they meet here? If the rumors are true then this place should have been destroyed by now. Red X said to Dot. Maybe someone lives here. Replied while the two were still climbing. Well whoever lives here has to come out of their house sooner or later. Red X said. Hey, Red X. Is that someone on the top of a tower? Stated while pointing up at the highest point. Red X decided to put the binocular feature to use and use them. He zoomed in to see who this person was. 
The person was a female who had long brown hair and brown eyes. Her current attire was a black bodysuit which hugged her figure. On her back was a blade. She seemed to be looking out into the sky. Naruto felt as though he recognized her from somewhere but just couldn't remember. I know her. I'm not sure from where exactly but she seems familiar. Red X stated to who nodded. On top of the tower. It's a beautiful time father. I'm sure that you would be pleased as to how the world turned out. There may have been wars, but the beauty of the land seemed to always come back. I just hope that you are in a better place now father. Not all of us can live forever. The women stated voicing her thoughts to the world. The women knew she had a meeting in a few minutes and decided to get ready to greet her guest. This woman has lived for quite a while and does not look past the age of 25. This person's name was Talia Algol. The daughter of Raz Algol. The Atoka Gay and his five shinobi were currently waiting at the front entrance of this castle. The Atoka Gay looked at the castle with interest because of the fact that this castle has been here ever since he was born. He remembered what his former sensei stated about this castle when he asked about it one day while they were on a mission. Hiruzen stated that this castle was there even before he was born. The Atoka Gay was now wondering what was inside this castle and where some of the rumors he heard were true. The castle door lowered as the sound shinobi watched in anticipation to see who owned this castle. Talia Algol was the person they saw walk towards them. Hello everyone. I am the host of this event. My name is Talia Algol, and if you would follow me we have multiple things to discuss today. The woman stated. The Atoka Gay was now thinking of a clan that had Gol. The group was now inside the Gol castle. They noticed how big the inside of it was. The walls of the castle were decorated with different paintings, while there were statues that were scattered around the area. The group was now at a huge rectangular table. The Atoka Gay guessed that this was where they would have their meeting. You may sit down. The Lightning Daimyu is having a tour of my place of residence. I have one of my guards with him so he should be back in a minute or so. Talia stated while the Lightning Daimyu and his guards came from around a corner and took a seat at the table. With Red X. We're almost to the castle. Stated while the two continued to their climb through the uphill forest. I know I've seen her before I know it. Naruto thought to himself while climbing up the forest. The two were finally able to reach where the castle was. This place really is big. Stated. Voicing her thoughts about how big the back of the castle was. You think she would have guards or something like that? Red X said while looking around and seeing nobody. How are we going to get in exactly? Asked while looking at different windows of this structure. Depends on where the meeting is at and then I can go from there. Red X replied. I think we're going to have to move. Ms. Free said while looking into the distance. I take it she has guards huh? Red X replied while nodded her head. They seem like they're on patrol. Ms. Free stated while continuing her observation. I don't think they know we're here. It just might be their job. Red X said to her. Both of them felt a presence behind them and turned around. What are you two doing here? Gambit asked a pair of mercenaries. If I were to say we're here to see the castle then you wouldn't believe me huh? Red X asked. Probably not. Kurohi replied to the masked mercenary. I have a feeling we are here for a similar goal and we can accomplish it by working together. Stated to the trio. I think we can pull this thing off if we play our cards right. Gambit replied while he was holding a few playing cards in his hand. Alright then. We'll work together as a team then. Kurohi said. How long have you guys been on this mountain? Red X asked. Not that long. We climbed the western side of the castle. I take you climbed either the eastern or the southern side. Gambit stated. Only idiot would try to go through the front door. Red X replied. Have you run into any guards? Kurohu asked. Not yet but there are a few walking over here. Said. Let's try to sneak up on them. Take them out silently and see if they have anything on them. Gambit stated. I can do that. Red X replied. I can assist. Said while remembering her hunter ninja training from Zabuza. Okay you two go to where those guards are while me and Gambit try to find a way to get in without being detective. Kurohu stated. We'll meet back her in five minutes. Ms. Freeze replied as they separated and went on with the plan. With Red X and Ms. Freeze. Red X and were currently in a tree. The tree they were in had a great view of four guards who at the moment were talking in a circle. Each with their backs facing outwards. There are about four of them. Each of them are armed with a tanto on their waist. I don't see any armor on them except on their arms and legs. Red X stated while using the binocular ability his mask provided. Okay Red X remember how I taught you about pressure points. Asked while Red X nodded. Of course I do. Red X replied while keeping lookout. Well it's time to put that to use. Come on. Stated as the two seemed to become blurs second after Ms. Freeze's statement. The guards were currently talking about the guest at the castle. Stating how that something wasn't right with the Atoka Gay. 
Red X and appeared behind two people each and hit them in the pressure point in their necks. The guards were now asleep. Let's see if they have anything of use. Red X stated as the two began going through the guards' pockets. The only thing the two were able to find were a couple of yen in their pockets. They did get a note of paper which stated where the meeting between the Atokage and Lightning Daimyu was. Seems like the meeting is in the dining room. Said while reading the note. Well let's move these guys to the forest so that we don't want to draw suspicion to ourselves. Red X stated while picked up two of the guards' body. Her and Red X moved the bodies to a part of the forest below, before going back to where they were supposed to meet the other duo. With Gambit and Kurohyu. The two were currently looking at the castle with a critical eye. The two were trying to find a way into the castle without drawing attention to themselves and their allies. They were having no luck at the moment. They heard footsteps coming from somewhere but could not pinpoint the source. Where are they coming from? Gambit asked while looking around. I really don't know. Kurohyu replied to her partner. Maybe they are coming from underground. Nibi said while using the mental link they had. The mental link they had was to be used in order for Nibi to view see hear taste and touch what her jailer felt. It just maybe. Yujito thought as both her and Gambit heard the sounds of gears turning. The two became blurs a second later and went to the forest. The two saw that the ground was opening and a few people were coming out of it. They seemed to be dressed in armor. The armor was gray and green. They saw that these guards were carrying katanas. Seems like there is more to this than meets the eye wouldn't you say? Gambit stated while noticing where the entrance was. Let's go Gambit. We have to meet back up with Red X and Dot Kurohyu replied as the two went back to the meeting spot. Meeting spot. The pairs of two meet back up with one another and exchanged information. Red X and Ms. Freeze were both having the same thoughts about what was really happening in this castle. Gambit and Kurohyu lead them to where the secret entrance was. Secret entrance. How are we going to open it? Red X asked. He wasn't sure how long he could hold his splitting X. The splitting X were physical and energy based X which when put on an object he could split it open. Hence the name splitting X. I could try freezing it. Suggested to the group. Wouldn't that bring attention to use? I mean once they see the ice they would be on guard more. Not that your idea isn't a good one Ms. Freeze. Gambit replied to her. Naruto was thinking about how gears worked. He was trying to recall something here ad from one of Bruce's book. Someone is in deep though. Kurohyu commented while looking at Red X who idea was about to surface. It could work Naruto. If they are using technology from Bruce's time then it should be no problem. Kayubi stated as a minute ago Naruto told Kayubi his plan about how to get into the castle through this entrance. I just hope so. Naruto replied as he snapped out of his thoughts. I have an idea. Red X stated to the group who turned their attention towards him. He then voiced his idea. Okay we all know that this thing uses gears right. Then something has to be controlling the gears. From my readings I learned that gears usually have to have some type of battery or some kind of control panel in order for them to operate properly. Here's the plan. Someone with the ability to manipulate lightning has to be able to send a jolt of lightning through the circuits and hit the battery or control panel. That way the door will open. It's better than me making it explode. Gambit commented. I'm great at lightning manipulation. Kurohyu stated. Don't forget fire. Nibi replied. How will she be able to see where the circuits are? Ms. Freeze asked. I've done this before. Maybe not with gears, but I do know how override a few security panels. Kurohyu replied while remembering how she had to shut down a few museum security panels. Well do you think Kurohyu? Gambit said as Kurohyu went to work. It took her about three minutes before they heard the gears start to turn. The door was now opened. That was hard, but I was able to pull through. Kurohyu stated. Nice. Now let's hurry up and get in. Red X replied as the group of four went down the stairs. Once down there the secret entrance closed leaving them in the dark before a pair of candles light up before them. The candles were across from one another. This can't be good. Gambit stated while they started to move forward. The group noticed that with every step they took a pair of candles would light up. Seems like there is a door at the end of this tunnel. Ms. Freeze stated while looking at the door and noticing there was a green glow behind it. Well let's go. Red X said as the group advanced to the door and opened it. The group walked in to see a huge pit with green flames in it. They saw the room had a spiral staircase which seemed to wrap around the room until it lead to another door. They saw that there was a chandelier hanging from the top of the room. They also heard a few monks that seemed to be chanting around the flame. Makes me glad I didn't chose to become a monk. Red X muttered while watching the monks at work. It seemed that the flames were reacting to what they were saying. Red X decided to make his way to the stairwell. The team took precaution when it came to the stairs, but as it turned out the monks were too focused on the flame to notice them. The group now reached the door at the top of this room and now made their way out. Now where are we? Gambit asked the group while looking around as to where they were. 
the group noticed that the place was huge. From the multiple stairwells to the different doors that seemed to be everywhere. The group also noticed the paintings and statues that decorated the castle. I believe we're in the main castle. Kurohu stated. Well let's search and see where this meeting is at. Red X said as the group started to explore this castle for themselves. They had to say that this place was huge. So many different rooms so many different things. If Naruto had to guess this person was a collector judging by what they have. The group started to hear talking. They stopped and saw that around the corner was where the meeting was taking place. The group noticed that the Atokage and the Lightning Daimyu both brought their own people. They decided to overhear what was going on. I hate the fact that people have to resort to war now and days in order to get their points across. Isn't Kumo still recovering from the last war Shibu? Talia asked the Daimyu. Why do you care about Kumo? To my knowledge you never left this castle. Shibu replied. Maybe it because there are people like you that run around and think just because they have one great idea, they need to have everyone see their point of view whether by force or have them agree with you due to fear. Talia stated to the group. Well how about this then? How about you come back to my village and I will show you that there is a place where people live in peace. The Atokage replied. I rather not. I can see your intentions written all over your face Atokage. Talia said shocking the Atokage. Intentions. I have nothing but good intentions. The Atokage replied as Talia gave him a cold glare that scared him. You may be able to lie to your subordinates but do not lie to someone who has seen things that you could not yet understand to comprehend. Talia said coldly to the Atokage. Shibu was glaring at Talia who could cause this alliance with the sound village to fail. Please ignore Atokage-sama. Shibu said trying to save the alliance. Ignore me. Please Shibu the only reason that you are alive is because of the fact that I don't feel like getting my hands dirty. Talia replied as her glare was now focused on Shibu. You think you can kill me? Foolish girl I am the daimyu of this country. My word is law if you haven't forgotten. Shibu stated trying to intimidate Talia with no luck. You do not intimidate me Shibu. I do not understand how people like you and the Sandame Raikage get their positions in this world. Talia stated seeing the anger that was now on Shibu's face. You take that back. The Sandame Raikage was a good man and did what was right for this country. Shibu yelled at Talia who still had a calm look on her face. If he was that good then why is he dead again? Case in point Shibu no one can live forever. Talia replied. What would you do if someone could live forever? The Atokage asked Talia. I would kill them. Simply because they should have died when their time period was up. Talia replied while the Atokage was thinking that she could be a threat, simply because she seemed to be serious about what she was saying. Are you speaking from experience? The Atokage asked trying to learn more about the women in the castle. No Atokage. Not at all. Talia said lying to the Atokage. Well let's put this treaty on paper. Shibu stated trying to get back to the subject at hand. The Atokage had wrote up the treaty himself and signed it. He then passed it to Shibu, but Talia took the treaty and read it herself before ripping it up. Shibu was shocked and so were his guards. The Atokage was angered by the fact that she dared to take the paper he wrote and rip it. I can't believe you called it a treaty. Oh and just to let you know Atokage the part about giving you Kumo's forbidden scroll was laughable. The thing I find interesting was the part where you state that after the war, you were going to replace Shibu with someone of your choosing. I found it amusing, but then again I should have let him sign it regardless. Talia stated. Shibu had now had it with Talia's attitude. Haley I have had it with your attitude. Shibu yelled to the women. I sorry to tell you this Shibu, but I have no attitude. That is just who I am, and if you have a problem with it you can take it up with me after this, so called meeting is over. Talia replied coolly. Shibu and his guard stood up. Guards kill Talia at once. Shibu stated. Red X and his friends were about to interfere, but Talia reacted by unsheathing her blade. A few seconds later the guards were dead. If you had blinked then you would have missed it. She was now sheathing her blade and started walking to Shibu. If you are going to try to kill me then do not announce it. It takes away the surprise. Oh and Orochimaru don't do anything stupid now. Talia said shocking everyone in the room. Orochimaru saw it was no point in keeping his Kage robes on and took them off for people to see what he really looked like. I must say Talia you are a very interesting person to say the least. Orochimaru said. Is that how you talk to all the women or am I just that special? Talia replied to the snake Sanon. No not really, but seeing as you have ruined my plans, then I have to kill you. Orochimaru stated as he threw up his blade Kusanagi. How can you call yourself a swordsman if you throw up the Kusanagi? It shows that you have no respect for that blade. Talia said. I'm a shinobi not a swordsman. Orochimaru replied while grasping the Kusanagi. If you were you would be able to use Kusanagi to its full potential. Talia stated drawing a look of confusion from Orochimaru. And what do you mean its full potential? 
Orochimaru asked. You're nothing like your grandfather that's for certain. Talia replied while Orochimaru now had his Minsa to kill Talia. Die. Orochimaru stated while charging at Talia who was ready to counter. Orochimaru started to use every type of Kenjutsu technique on Talia. She was able to counter all of them with ease. It even looked like she was bored while fighting the snake summoner. Someone needs to step up their game. Just to let you know I'm not Hanzu and I will not show you any sort of mercy. Talia replied coldly while Orochimaru jumped back to where his loyal guards were. Fill her. Orochimaru commanded as Red X and his group made themselves known. Banging up on a lady isn't nice. Red X stated while entering the room with Ms. Freeze Gambit and Kurohyu beside him. I was wondering when you guys were going to do something. Taylor replied not looking back to see who was on her side. What can we say gorgeous? We were enjoying the show. Gambit commented while pulling out his bow staff. I'm glad I was someone's entertainment. Now let's get these so-called shinobi out of my house and then we can talk later. Talia stated. Fine by us. Kurohyu replied as Orochimaru and his elite shinobi split up and went to different places in the castle in order to fight. Split up and capture them. You can kill them if you want to. Talia said as she went towards Orochimaru's location as the rest split up and searched. With Talia. Did you really think you can get away from me in my house? Talia stated as she saw where Orochimaru was standing. She noticed Kusanagi was not in his hand. She assumed that he swallowed the blade again. Of course I did not. I just wanted to kill you myself. Orochimaru replied while going through hand signs rapidly. Talia saw the hand signs in slow motion. When you live for centuries you learn a few things. Wind style great breakthrough. Orochimaru shouted as a powerful blast of wind went directly towards Talia, who pulled out her sword and cut through the wind attack. The wind from the attack went around her. She blocked my wind jutsu with that blade. I may have to be careful there is no telling what that blade can do. Orochimaru thought while well, coming up with another attack in order to gauge her skills. If that is the best you have I suggest you walk away now. Talia said as Orochimaru started to use another tactic he always used. Hidden shadow snake hands. Orochimaru said while thrusting his left arm forward. Three snakes shot out of his sleeve and went sailing towards Talia who dodged the snakes before slicing them in half. I wonder if she is only good with that blade. If so then I just need to get rid of it and change the tide of battle for me. Orochimaru thought while well, coming up with another tactic in order to get her blade. If you think throwing ninjutsu at me is going to scare me then you're wrong. Talia stated as she noticed that the world around her was changing. Dot, she started to see herself dead. The jinjutsu. A really bad one at that. Talia thought while closing her eyes and focusing her senses. She then threw her blade at a corner in the room. The world around her shattered. Her plan in breaking the jinjutsu worked. She saw that she hit a slab of mud instead of the snake summoner. Now where is he? Talia asked herself as a rumble under her caught her attention. She jumped out of the way to see Orochimaru leap at her and engage her in a high-paced jutsu battle. I really hope he didn't think I only relayed on Kenjutsu. Talia thought while going on the offense. She started to hit Orochimaru with quick punches before she hit him with a powerful kick which sent him a few feet away. Damn, she really is good. I wish I knew more about her so that I was prepared. I need to make my escape soon before she gains the upper hand on me. Orochimaru thought while getting up from his self-made crater. He was now looking around to see where his opponent was but saw a shadow over him. He moved out of the way just in time. Orochimaru looked where he just was and saw the ground now had a slash mark in it. I'm done playing around. Time to go on the offense. Talia thought while turning around and sprinted towards Orochimaru who threw down multiple smoke bombs in order to make his escape. Talia used her senses to the fullest and was now following the snake who was now trying to escape. She just keeps coming. Orochimaru thought while going through hand signs. Summoning technique. Orochimaru thought again as puff of smoke covered the room. A huge brown snake appeared. Talia analyzed the new animal and came up with a strategy in order to defeat the snake. She was about to start her plan when she saw the snake swallow Orochimaru and burrowed underground. She thought about chasing the snake but decided against it. We'll cross paths again Orochimaru. I count on it. Talia thought while gripping her blade. She then sprinted off to the other areas where battles were happening. With Gambit. Currently Gambit was dodging Kitamaru's self-made arrows. The spider had the advantage since he was standing on top of the stairwell. Gambit was currently thinking of a way to end this battle once. He seems like he wouldn't last that long in Tejutsu. I highly doubt that there is a scroll on six-armed Tejutsu. Jakku thought while pulling out an ace. There is no way that I am losing this battle. I have the advantage. Kitamaru thought while shooting off more arrows. Gambit now made his way to a grandfather clock and took cover behind it. A few seconds is all I need. Jakku thought as his card glowed a deep violet. Time for him to die. Kitamaru thought while taking precise aim at the grandfather clock. 
He fired off his arrow at a fast speed. Gambit heard the arrow and moved. He then threw his cart at a high speed at Kitamaru. Kitamaru remembered what happened last time and moved out of the way. Once the cart hit something there was a huge explosion. I would be dead if that hit me. Kitamaru thought while well, sticking to a wall like a typical spider. Spiders. Jakku thought while well, observing his opponent's movements. Time for me to strike. Kitamaru thought as he started gathering spider thread in his mouth. Whatever he is about to do. I have to be prepared for it. Jakku thought while well, gripping his bow staff. He channeled violet energy into the tips of the bow staff. Kitamaru then spit out a net like cobwebs which went towards Gambit. Gambit twirled his bow staff before thrusting it at the cobweb. The cobweb exploded once it hit the bow staff. This guy keeps on countering my moves. I need to take this up a level. Kitamaru thought while gathering spider thread in his mouth again. This time he was going to go for his spider sticky vomit technique. If it's another one of those cobweb attack. He's getting it. Jakku thought while pulling out five playing cards which started to glow violet. Spider sticky vomit. Kitamaru thought while spitting out a cobweb unlike the last one this one went faster. Gambit jumped over the cobweb and threw them at Kitamaru who was caught in the explosion. This guy is dead. Kitamaru thought while getting up and facing Gambit. A purple mark started to glow on Kitamaru. Gambit noticed the mark and went into a defensive stance not knowing what the mark was going to do. Kitamaru knew when the curse seal pulsed like that it meant Orochimaru wanted them to leave. Kitamaru decided to throw multiple smoke in order to make his escape. Gambit threw a few more cards at a rapid rate trying to hit Kitamaru, but the spider was able to make his escape. Next time we meet spider you will lose. Jakku thought as he decided to go find his other teammates. With Kurohyu. She was currently fighting the biggest member of the Sound 5. She had to admit he had power in his blows, but she was able to counter with her reflexes. Come on big boy. Kurohyu taunted trying to anger him in order to make him slip up. Jirabu had slammed both his palms into the ground. Kurohyu had a feeling that he was about to use a jutsu. I will squash you. Earth style. Mausoleum Earth dumpling. Jirabu shouted as he lifted a chuck of earth and threw a Kurohyu, who used her whip which at the moment was being enhanced by lightning to break through it. I'm your worst matchup. Kurohyu stated while maintaining her grip on her whip. Jirabu knew that his ninjutsu were going to be at a disadvantage. He decided to try his hand at engaging her into jutsu. The jutsu again. You think he realized that I'm his worst enemy. Yujito though while starting to dodge Jirabu's fist. She then saw an opening and decided to take it. She hit Jirabu with multiple kicks which were enhanced by her lightning chakra. Jirabu was sent back about 4 feet. This guy can take a hit. Then again he is with Orochimaru after all. Yujito thought while readying herself for another round. She noticed that a mark on his shoulder seemed to be glowing purple. What is that? Yujito asked herself while observing the mark which at the moment seemed to be pulsing. Whatever that mark is. I have a bad feeling about it. Nibi stated her thoughts. Jirabu at the moment threw down a few smoke bombs and made his escape. For a huge guy he sure knows how to run. Yujito thought to herself while looking around the area one last time before deciding to find her teammates. With Ms. Freeze. The Jutsu. It was one of the things her opponent excelled at. She was currently on the defensive while he continued with this weird offense of his. First he would start with kicks, then come in with punches. Not only that but it felt like she was getting hit twice. Maybe it's a Keki Genkai. From what I know there is no way two people let alone brothers should be able to bond in such a way. If it is then I need to find a way to stop it. Haku thought to herself while trying to come up with a new strategy altogether. Finally deciding to quit huh. Seiken taunted the ice user who currently was on the other side of the room. Now brother don't taunt the enemy. We can do that later after she is dead. Yukin replied trying to keep his brother focused on the task at hand. It wouldn't be me brother if I did not mock my opponent before I killed them now would it? Seiken said to his brother. Whatever. Just make sure you finish this. Yukin replied again while Seiken started to advance to Ms. Freeze, who finally had an idea that was sure to work. Time to set the trap. Haku thought while making a few one-handed hand signs. Seiken saw this and laughed at his opponent as he started to sprint towards her. One-handed hand signs. You must be a dumb if you think that can work on me. Seiken mocked while cocking his right arm back before jabbing it forward. He was able to hit her stomach directly. You're done. Seiken taunted again as he felt his hand start to become cold. Before he could react to this feeling his entire right arm was now encased in ice. I believe I am just getting started Seiken and Yukin. Ms. Freeze replied as she was currently behind the two. Brother do something. Seiken yelled in distress. He wasn't expecting her to know ice manipulation, let alone how to use one-handed hand signs at that. I always have to help you don't I then again I am the older brother for a reason. Yukin stated as Ms. Freeze saw that another body was starting to separate from the twins. 
Once the process was complete Ms. Freeze now saw Yukin was now out of Seiken's body. I can only guess that there is some kind of negative to these two separating. If I had to make a conclusion then Yukin cannot stay out of Seiken's body that long. Now it's time to see how long that time is. Haku thought while pulling out multiple senbens. She was ready to see how long Yukin could be separated from Seiken. Senbens really? Yukin asked his opponent until he saw how fast she could throw them. He dodged them, but his brother was not that fortunate. What the hell Yukin? Seiken shouted at his brother's stupidity. He knew his arm was encased in ice, did he really need more pain? Is it my fault you can't get out of some ice? Yukin replied as he continued to dodge the senbens his opponent was sending at him. Yukin decided to change tactics by hitting Ms. Freeze with a few punches. She was also able to get in a few hits as well. I'm not sure how long I can go on without using the curse seal. I hope that idiot known as my brother can get out of that ice sooner else. Yukin thought knowing he couldn't keep this up for another 5 minutes at most. Range technique seems to work on them. Yukin doesn't hit as hard as Seiken. Must be one of the negatives of them separating. Haku thought while analyzing the situation. She was brought out of her thoughts by a cracking sound. Seiken arm was now free from the ice prison. Finally. Yukin stated while going towards his brother's body. Not so fast. Ms. Freeze replied as she threw a few kunais with explosive tags. The two were forced to dodge. This bitch. Forcing Yu's to be separated. I need to get to my brother. Yukin thought as a purple mark started to glow on both their shoulders. A purple mark on both their shoulders. I feel evil chakra coming from it. I guess it is time to use it. Haku thought while reaching for a certain freeze scroll. She was about to unseal the scroll when Seiken threw down a few smoke bombs in order to make an escape. Ms. Freeze used a quick wind jutsu to clear the smoke from the room and saw that they both left. Those two are interesting to say the least. I must make notes about these two in order to have the upper hand next time we face off. Haku thought while going to find her teammate. With Red X. It seems his opponents were leading him to the basement where the green flames were located. Red X could only guess that they didn't know what was down there and assumed they were just trying to use lose him in the castle. Kamimro and Teaya went through the door that lead them to the basement. Naruto could only help the monks wouldn't mind a little bit of noise. They were now on the floor of the basement both sides were ready to fight. I do not know what either of my opponents are capable of. I need to keep an open mind around both of them if I am going to win. Naruto thought while trying to come up with a plan in order to fight both of them. Red Xan. I would wish for us to fight one on one if that is alright with you? Kamimro asked the masked mercenary. How do I know Teaya won't interfere in our battle? Red X asked his opponent. She will not. Unlike most shinobi I have honor. Something that is hard to find in people. Kamimro replied. A ninja with honor. Who would have guessed? Red X said. So I take it you accept my challenge then? Kamimro asked while getting into one of his clan's fighting stances. Of course. I always wanted to know what it would be like to fight a ninja with honor. Now I finally get this chance and there is no way I'm letting it slip by. Red X replied while holding a few X shurikens. Well then let's begin. Kamimro stated as the two charged at one another. Red X was dodging Kamimro's blows. Red X had to admit that this was going to be a long battle. Red X decided to take a leap back in order to catch his breath for a second. Kamimro on the other hand brought both his hands forward. Red X saw that his fingertips were opening. Then finger drilling bullets. Kamimro said as from his fingertips small bones were sent flying through the air. Red X jumped out of the way to see the bones impale the wall behind him and were still going through it. Aku did say that Kagaya's Keki Genkai could manipulate bones, but this is ridiculous. Naruto thought while trying to come up with a strategy. Kamimro on the other hand decided to show this masked mercenary why he was the leader of the Sound 5. If you do not know then I am a Kagaya. That means I have the ability to manipulate my bone structure and that I am allowed to combine my chakra with calcium, which makes my bones flexible. In other words my dead bone pulse is a powerful weapon. Kamimro stated while his palm started to open. Red X saw that two bones were starting to come out of his palm. That can't be good. Naruto thought while summoning his blade. In his right hand he held Shippuhain and was ready for this fight. So that is the Shippuhain Arachimaru Sama wanted. I wonder if the rumors surrounding that blade are true. Kamimro thought while remembering the blade can cut through any metal. Dance of the Willows. Kamimro said while sprinting towards Red X. Red X on the other hand went on the defensive with his blade. Kamimro started his attack with multiple bone thrusts at a fast speed. Red X was able to block a few of them but took a few hits. Red X was then able to counter and hit Kamimro with a few slashes of his own. The two opponents had their weapons locked with one another. Red X decided to go for another tactic. Why do you work for Rachimaru? Red X asked the bone user. I work for him because he gave me a purpose in life, and I plan on living up to his expectation. 
Kimimro stated while keeping pressure on his opponent. I should have had Haku talk to this guy. Red X thought while deciding to continue this tactic going. What if he abandoned you? Red X asked. He would never abandon me. He knows that I am a valuable tool for his success. Kimimro replied as he jumped back a few feet in order to separate himself from his opponent. Seems like someone doesn't know Orochimaru's history. Red X commented as Taiya had enough of Red X mouth. That's it asshole. I have had it with you disrespecting Orochimaru-sama. Taiya stated while bringing out her flute. Taiya do not interfere in my fight. Kimimura yelled at his partner who was quick to reply. Why the hell should I not? Look you may be a person with this so-called honor code, but I don't have that. Unlike you I think as a shinobi not some dumbass samurai. Taiya replied as Kimimura turned to face his partner. Just note Tei, you will be punished once I tell Orochimaru-sama about your insubordination. Kimimro stated coldly. Well who do you think he will believe more the second in command of the Sound 4 or someone who has outlived his usefulness? Tei said not backing down from Kimimro. She knew he could beat her, but she still had her pride as a shinobi. It seems these two cannot cooperate together. Kayubi stated. Well this will be their downfall. I assure you that Kayubi. Naruto thought while charging up an explosive axe in both his hands. Fine do what you must then. Just don't stand in my way. Kimimura replied as he turned around to see his opponent vanish. I. Red X stated while putting two explosive X on Kimimura's chest. The bone user couldn't react as they went off as soon as Red X disappeared again. The explosion was so powerful that it sent Kimimura flying into Taiya which caused the two to fly into the green flamed pit. The monks who were chanting didn't know what to do since only Talia was the only one who used the Lazarus pits. Lucky for them Talia appeared in the chamber with Ms. Freeze, Kurohu, and Gambit right behind her. What the hell happened? Talia asked out loud. I used a type of explosion which sent Kimimro and Taia into the pit of green flames. Red X stated. He was owning up to his own mistakes. We'll talk later. Right now I have two people to save. Keen Dono prepare your men for incantation 27. I will lead. Talia stated as Keen who was the head monk that served Talia nodded his head. I can only hope that this works. I do not want them to become addicted to the pits like my father was. I only used them because it was my father's last order to me. I promised him that I would continue using the pits until I found another purpose in life. It seems like I just did. Talia thought to herself while positioning herself in front of the pit. Keen was right beside her. His monks were in a circle around the pit. Again. Talia stated as the monks prepared themselves. Red X, Ms. Freeze Kurohu and Gambit were about to witness something that they would never believe could happen. Thanks for watching guys. Hope you all are enjoyed this video. If you do please leave a like share and subscribe also don't forget to support author of this fanfic. So let's end this video here. Until then see you in next video.